Hello there. Welcome to Wally Bois. And in this this live stream, I should say, um, it's part two. If you joined me yesterday, you'll know that what I was doing was restoring my uh, uh, hollow chisel mortar set. It's a chisel machine. Well, it's a machine designed primarily to create a Hello. square. Oh, oh no, what's happening? Welcome to Wally Bois. And in this, this live stream, I should say, um, part two. <laughs> done it again. Right. <laughs> Every time I do that, I don't know why. Me not thinking. So basically what we've got is, um, I've dismantled it, as you, we did yesterday. And we've got a series of bits. Yeah, components. So I'm going to show you all those components. Let me just go up here so I can see what's going on. Hello, Ben. Oh, no. I'm going to try and make it so it's a bit closer today. Yeah, so you can see what's going on. Try and get some close-ups. Hence, I'm holding this at the minute. But we won't be in the moment. I'll put it down in a sec. So I'm just going to make sure that is good. Hello, Susan Dewitt. Right, so. There, that there. That there that's good. So basically what we did is we dismantled this machine yesterday and we got a series of components. Some of them on the floor over there that still need to clean up. But everything's had fresh water over them um, and then brought in here to dry. And there are some of the other components here. And I've been cleaning up the nuts and bolts and stuff like that. Uh, when I came back in here last night, oh, what can I do? I'll do that. So I'll start cleaning bits and pieces up on the wire wheel on the bench grinder over there. So some of it's going to have to be put back together now, but some of it still needs some work. Um, but if I can show you what's been going on, I don't know what I do need. I'm just need to get my phone so I can have a chat. What have we done? Where have I put my phone on <laughs> So, what we're going to do is we're going to try and keep the camera a bit closer so we can see what's going on. Right. We're going to have to lift the machine onto here, hence these chains. Got a chain winch, we lifted it onto here because it's incredibly heavy, this machine. is. It's um, far more heavy than I ever expected it to be. If I remember right, I have managed to lift it before my Todd. I probably almost broke my back, I imagine, because it's, it's, it's quite a weighty, weighty machine. So let's just bring the chat up. Dee, 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 dee. Got on the right one, though. There we are. So hopefully it's been interesting for you. Yep, there we go, bring that up there. Oh, look at me, that's me again. There we go. Hey, now I've got the chat. Dee, 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 dee. So bit by bit, we're going to clean it up. up. I'm not going to paint it. I've thought about it, but what's the point? I want to make the machine so I can use it. Now, the machine itself is made of a variety of different components. And uh, I'll just bring you a little bit lower down so you can see what's going on. Let me just move that over there. How's that? That's fair. Right, so we've got the base here. This is the, the base of the machine. So this is the thing that everything has been, it's going to be built off. Now I've cleaned it up, got rid of all the old rust uh, that was there. Let's just bring this microphone a little bit lower. That's a bit there. Um, but also, where it was a bit pitted, I used a uh, little diamond DMT sharp like this one with a bit of a white spirit. And I just cleaned them up, flat them up with a bit of where it was a bit pitted. So um, yeah, this is a dovetail here. And this dovetail will have one of these installed on it as well. A bit like that. Or the other way around. Be like that. Right, so the clamp would take up any slack. And this is part of the carriage for two and forth. So back and forwards. On the back here, um, we have another uh, component that we that is mounted on there. So I believe it's probably that. Like that. And that skews. So if you, does the compound angle for the, the head and the arm. Now, I've greased it all up, and also there's, there's a big... Is that the right around? That's the right around. So, I would at least that. Basically, this then can be screwed one way or the other, then you tie it up in the allen So what we've got is like a rack and pinion arrangement here. So it's like a, a flat, a flat cog, with a bit of curving actually, and then the pinion goes 
like a worm drive. Then you just back to forwards, and then you lock it off with the arrow key on the back there. Now, I didn't mark which bolt or which, which I might regret later, but we'll see. I might not, I might do. So, I need to say that, so we mounted onto that with um, four bolts. You know, I really should have marked these, shouldn't I? You know, I think it's the wrong way around. That is the wrong way around. It goes that way. That's correct. That way up. Yeah. Like so. And it has four of these Allen bolts. Like so. So they've got like a, yeah, like an Allen screw, which went into there. That's what held that down. Now, I can't see, I don't think there was any, well, there might be. They are, they'll be in one of these tubs. Everything is together. No, nope, there isn't. So there wouldn't be. Oh, it's one whether or not there would have been a split washer on there, like one of these washers. And the idea of these is so they they pinch, so they dig in either side, they stop it from working its way loose. But really, it's just like yank the thing down as hard as you possibly can. Bernard says, I'm sitting here with a truss on after what? With a truss on after lifting our pool filter, oh my god, at the beginning of December. So mind your back, yeah. I've been there, done that. Not the pool fillers, but other heavy stuff. The days of me lifting engines in and out of Morris Miners are gone, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm still fairly strong, but crikey. It's foolish. <laughs> it's bl uh, bloody miners is what it is. Hence, the chain winch, air lifting the whole thing up, which we did yesterday, which you probably saw. In yesterday's live stream. I met this there, as you can see. But there's still components need cleaning up. Now, that one, I could actually, if I wanted to, I could just bolt that straight down. But before I do, I'm going to put a bit of grease on here and on the opposing face here. And the reason for that, I don't want it to rust because there's nothing to stop that from rusting in between with the humidity in the air. So if I, if I put a smear of grease on there and here, can you see what I'm doing here again just about? Um, that should prevent that. And I've got a tub of grease over there and I've also got another tub of grease over there. And I've got a bear. I'm going to get my bear. <laughs> So I've got a beer. Saturday, it's having nice Saturday. I don't always drink during the week anymore. Dum, dum, dee, dum, dum, dum. Just multi purpose grease. Any grease will do, to be honest. Don't really matter. Have you ever wondered why a tub of grease like this has like a hole in the middle of a plastic disc in it? That's so, if you had the old fashioned type of um, grease gun, you literally push that over the top of that bit in the middle and then pushes the outside and it squeezes the grease into the grease gun. If you ever wondered why you've got... Same on this one over here. Same like that. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Grease is very greasy. Though. I might find a stick to put in my, my tub of grease. I think. I have a stick. I have a stick. I have a stick. I have a stick. Come here, stick. Come stick. Back to the light. Spatula stick. Well, I've got some in there, but I could use. used. So now I'm just going to smear a bit on there. Obviously, not as thick as that. And a bit on here as well. I have actually put some grease on there as well, but I might put some more on that bit. The problem with the grease, though, is that dust sticks to it. So you create a paste after a while, and it's um, not very helpful. Part of the problem before, I reckon. There are things you can use, but I'm using grease, because I've got it. So. If I don't have to buy something, I'll try not to. That's what you do in your pauper. Okay, it's one minute, so. Um, and then we'll make sure everywhere is covered. And I'll whack a bit of grease on there as well, I think. On that, uh, on that worm gear. Pinion worm gear. 
D like so. That will work its way around to its side. I want the machine to be useful. You know, it's been sitting there in that old barn for such a long while now. And it's just such, such a waste. It really is a waste. And I will use it. Especially I'll do this channel, because it'll be quite handy. Oh, that lovely orange. Oh, it feels so good and slippery. Right, so we've got these soaked in oil. They've been soaked in oil overnight. I'm cleaning all the threads up on the wire brush, which is the machine over here. My wire wheel. Sometimes I'll just use that in the vise. We can put these back on it. Now that's next. Air, everything's been wet because I'd um because I used the press washer to get rid of the really thick, nasty grime. So I had to make sure everything was dry because obviously it just continued rusting. You see, let's bring it down a bit. La 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 la. Oily hands. I'm touching the camera there again. That's better. So. Just take note of what you said yes you burned if you want me any closer let's just say <laughs> i might be getting a bit closer so i'm just uh putting the old bolts back in here there's four bolts like so so i suppose you don't need to see my ugly mat all the time do you why would you want to that's what i would like to know it's a bit awkward because you've got everything in the way and so so that and angle. hence i'm using these knobbly ended like a knuckle joint sort of thing an angle. let's spread it in there at a certain angle let's get the worst of it and then we'll yeah, finish off with the uh, the other way. Spread them in there. So, so it's it is a chunky old machine. It's quite old. Um, I don't know say old. Probably not old in my in, you know my standards really. But uh, it's getting on a bit. And when I was using it, I wasn't really using it that much. Probably when I was doing like windows and doors and stuff like that, I was using it a lot for that. And then I got that other machine, which is Professional Dorm of the Dara, and that made such, it's transformed the way I work. It was so fast, it was strong, the joints were really strong. Um, surprisingly strong, really, because really what they are, just like, uh, they were, I suppose, a bit like um, dowels, really, on steroids, you know. But oval dowels, so you had like flat, like flat, flat faces on them. It was quite good. Now, none of these bolts. As you may have heard yesterday, you remember, none of these bolts were particularly tight. Everything, you know, came undone really easily. Right. Oh, Simon says. Hi, dear. Hi. Hope you are. And good afternoon to Susan as well. Hope the family's well. Little Shannon and that. And you have a heart. Having a nice weekend. Right. All these surfaces here will all have to be greased. I'm not going to do it just yet. Push that out. Because we've got other parts to be um, sorted out. One of the things that was a bit of a problem was this. And I cleaned it up yesterday, took it apart, cleaned it up. And this is the clamp around it. It clamps your piece of wood against the fence, ready for you to be able to drill your square holes. Yes, square holes. Um, and this was all really, really rusty. It's a bit, it's a bit grey and pitted. But it, it works now. So the idea is push this up against, say for example, it's your fence. Can you see that there? Yeah. You push it up against your piece of wood. You sort of trap your piece of wood up against the fence. And you, with one single lead, you just lock it off like that. And it's locked. It's done. That's all you need, you see. But if the problem, one of the problems you have with these machines, if anything such as these dovetails are slack or anything like that is slack, any movement in the machine at all, what happens is as we try and pull. The chisel out, say for just the chisel, I'm trying to the grip, so it's trying to be pulled out and it's grabbing the side. Because there's isn't that much pressure here, because it's not screwed down or anything like that. Um, I mean, screwed up against, you know, uh, like a G clamp up against the fence. It can actually crank the piece of wood. There's a bit of poor design in it. In some ways, it's great, it's quick. You can just do that and move it along if you want. Really quick and easy. So it's locked off. I'm well, not locked off there, locked off there. There, there, or is it there? There, locked off. So, yeah, anyway, we cleaned it all up, and inside here, because I had this all apart, there's basically this disc with a hole in it, set an angle over, the, over this um, shaft with a spring. And what happens is, when, when this is released, the spring pushes the plate against the, uh, um, sort of traps the bar, stops it from sliding back and forwards. And you can adjust it on the screw here. But this lever here, you can release it and then it allows you to pull it in and out. Yeah, so it's simple, very simple arrangement. 
it works, you know, so that doesn't need to go on yet. yet. But we've got a couple of other components um, that can go on. And remember, right, well, the next one really makes sense would be this carriage. So if I go and get the carriage that goes on there, hang on, is that the carriage over there? I've already cleaned it up. It's over here. This is the carriage. That one there. So if I grab that, see what, whether or not, see what we need to do to make that work. Get that back on. Bits to do, tag a bit of the TLC. Uh, it probably needs a bit more. It needs a handle as well. Ugh. Something just dropped on the floor. I don't know what it was. Oh, this. It is a piece of granite. Because I basically pressure washed everything on the driveway, which is granite, granite chimneys. So, because it's got wet, there's placed a bit of pitting on here, which I'll, I'll try and clean up in a second. And on here as well, a bit of pitting. Uh, nothing major, but this hair, we see this little pan, that was my temporary handle, just so I can make sure everything's working. Because one of these plastic handles has broken up, this one's got cracks in it as well. Um, and so the, that one over there, there's another one over here as well, <coughs> which is the one that does, I think, to and fro on there. That also has some little hairline cracks in it, there's one there. So, yeah, it's gone brittle. So I... Uh, Idea, I need to make one there, whether it be wood or something, I don't know, metal, wood, I don't know, whatever I choose to use, it needs another handle, sort of like a little wheel. It's not how often that one get used, to be fair. Uh, what are it? It's that way around. That's it, like that. So this one will move the carriage to and fro, yeah, so you can do longer uh, mortises. Now some of the cheaper, or the smaller machines, don't have this arrangement, this carriage. You have to fissy, you have to go, you've got to unclamp a bit of wood and move it along and then do the next square hole, move it along to the next square hole. Which is all very well, but this is, this is, you know, this machine's more pucker. It's a good machine, it really is. Or what's. So this should slide onto this dovetail. I think this handle here, this one, goes, I think, it goes in there. Then I think, and I think there's a rub screw in there. <laughs> I was saying with because I can't remember what I did. <laughs> you know, yesterday I was saying, oh, I don't need to take pictures of it because it's been long enough. I know what's what. And uh, now I've forgotten. <laughs> so, so what will probably happen is I'll probably put it all together and then I've got this one piece left. I can't get on. I've got to dismantle it to get it on. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. That'd be solid all, wouldn't it? So I have pressure off these, so everything was covered in a nasty kind of grime. At the moment it's got like soil that's kind of where I've chewed the driveway up with the pressure washer while I was cleaning this. So um this I believe I believe goes on half like so. I'm pretty certain it does. That goes on there like so. Or that way around. No, that way around. Like that. That's it. That way around. Remember now. And that's bolted onto there. The two bolts. And that effectively, this threaded arrangement here, goes, that goes in there like so. Yeah. I want to make sure that's nice and clean first. Make sure those threads in there are clean. I have pressure washer, but there will be some grit in there, you see. From, um, yeah, from when I was doing the pressure washer. So let's make sure the air compressor's on, so make sure those threads are clean, they can oil them up. There's that, it's gone there, it makes sense. Now here we have all these little uh, Allen screws here, and little, little nuts. I want to release all them, make sure they're all slack. Release the Kraken! Right, like so. I don't know if you heard, there's been about two and a half thousand people have been expelled from the EU since Brexit up until September last year. They have, you know, basically have various reasons. The most common is that they probably haven't set them their uh, residency. Some of these lot of people living under the radar as well, so that wouldn't have helped, which means they don't have no official evidence that they've been living there. 
But to be fair, you know, they have had a while, uh, quite a while to sort themselves out. You know, so they could have done easily. The thing is, some countries didn't opt in for the general, I think Portugal did, Spain did, France didn't, uh, Netherlands, uh, Denmark, countries like that, they didn't. Denmark? I think it's Denmark. So they, they have to abide by the uh, rules of the said country. There should be a drumster in there. I think I could probably put in their name. So I hope uh, everything is got. There's a bush here. Little bush. Bush, bush. Not President Bush. No. There's quite a bit of grease on there. Everything's going to be greased because everything's been made wet. Although I have been cleaned up with some oil as well. White spirits. That's my version of WD-40. Water displacement 40 times. Make sure everything's got grease on it. It is annoying for me. This is, you know, it's that, like I said earlier, that everything will just, well, the dust just stick on that grease. So, yeah, I'll just have to make sure I clean it and re grease occasionally, I suppose. I've got the same problem with my table saw over there. There's components on there that have to be greased. But you've got sawdust falling off, you know, falling all around it. It's the start. So it just fills up with saw, yeah, and with, um, you know, you know like paste. Dee 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 I don't know how long this is going to take me, but hey -o. Hello, who's Zebediah Thomas? I hope you're well, buddy. Keep at it, he says, keep at it. Surprised there weren't more expulsions. Yeah, I know, there's about two and a half thousand so far. Um, the only thing I would say to that is in Spain, they haven't actually... Well, they say there isn't any, according to the official reports of statistics in the EU. Uh, I suppose it's like the uh, national statistics for the European Union, I suppose. But um, the fact of the matter is, Spain hasn't actually logged any. <laughs> so that, that would be the case there, I should imagine. So we don't actually know. I know that people have them, because I've been told that they have them. Um, but on the whole, we'll see. We'll see. Things should have been done, shouldn't they? You know, they, we had opportunities to sort out. We had to do it, and many other people had to. And within the first year of moving here in, in France... We we start we you know we pretty much immediately really by by within about twelve months we had our our um car for town and stuff our healthcare sorted out. It was a learning curve. We didn't know what to do, you know. We came over here. We really very little knowledge of the situation and what we had to do. Um, because all a bit of a, you know mad thing at the moment at the time. Yeah, oh, let's do it. So we did. Right, what we're around now, that will obviously have to go that way around. So that's going to slide onto there. So that's going to there. I think we're going to have to put the uh, little rubber screw in it. Otherwise, I might not be able to get to it because the carriage will be over the top of it. If that makes any sense. Oh, it all happens. There's actually been a lot of talk about um, Brexit on, uh, online at the moment. Various issues about unveiling themselves. Okay, one of those issues obviously is people don't really, they don't really understand what they have to do in many cases. It seems a bit odd to me. Well, those two are the same. There's two grub screws there the same. The short one there, I imagine it's going to be this one. Put it there. That would make sense, I think. I should probably get some different um, arrow keys from the other room, really. These ones are a bit shit. There you go. Uh, what about it? Oh, hang on, is that the right size? That's the right size. It is. Hey. Uh, oh, I'll put a bit of grease on there. Take it off there. No, no, oh, there. I don't want any bare surfaces or anything that's been washed free of grease from when I've been the pressure washing. So anything we use the pressure washer. But it's really anything I could really do, to be honest. Maybe, maybe it will be a different one. I don't know if that's the right cross screw. We'll find out later. The two they're the same. What have they got? I should have marked them, shouldn't I? This is when I'm going to regret this, isn't I? I'm going to say, oh my god, Marcus, what do you do? You've got to take that all off, mate, just to get that grub screw. I'm looking at that. I'm going to say that might be a case. Oh well. Say living, say living. Oh! Oh! I have 
done something wrong. <laughs> I just remember now what I did last time. When I slid this off, I did it from the back. So, what I'm going to have to do is do it from the front, because I've already put that on. Let's remove that. Because remember, how do I slide that carriage on with everything in the way? I tried to do it from the front. Last time I did it from the back. So, I might do it from the front. Move that out. Move that back out. Let's, let's get this back on here. Which way round again? That way round. Yeah, that way round. I've got to slide it onto there. So what I need to do is pre-grease all this before I get a bit too carried away. Um, otherwise, there's a risk of me not getting the grease where it needs to go. So, um, yeah, not because I don't want any areas that have no grease on because I'll just rust. Because I basically washed all the grease away when I was pressure washing it. It could just corrode on me. I don't want it to happen. And, and any corrosion in those sort of areas, you just, it's just going to make it... Well, just it won't be very slippery, will it? It'll just... um. The rust will grip. I'll take hold, it'll grip it well. Da, 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 da. Make sure it's all in there. This one has a plate on where those um, grub screws go. So, like I said, I was toying with the idea, painting everything up, sort of toying with the idea. Um, I decided not to because I'm not a tool tart, I just want machines to work. And um, I think sometimes when you see some of these workshops, <laughs> Everyone's really you got these lovely planes all shiny on the rack in the background and what have you. You don't use that, do you? That's just there for show, isn't it? Yeah, you know, when's the last time you used that? It's either that or you use it all the time. I mean literally all the time and it keeps it clean. The likelihood of that is slim. So it's a bit of a yeah, I'm not really into that. So I've got a dealt with the same time really. Put some grease on there. Might mix that with a bit of um because it'll be too much grease it's all gonna ooze out everywhere. Not careful. You can get spray on you could use like um motorcycle chain chain grease. That's will do one. Well yeah, a lot of companies do, to be honest. Uh that'd probably work, but then you'd be you're just spraying bloody grease all over the place, wouldn't you? But I don't want that to be too thick because I've already got it on the carriage. I will as long as I've got all those surfaces covered, I'd be quite happy at that. Do, 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 do. Lovely gooey stuff. Oh, it's like being a kid again, it is. Do, 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 do. Right. I, I was going to go live this Sunday on the, on the other side, on the other channel. Uh, I've decided not to, but I will be going live tomorrow, that is, this Sunday. Um, I might go live on this channel again. But I'm not going to go live on there tomorrow, but I am going to start the following Sunday. Um, the reason for that is my missus is going to visit in the UK and it's like our last evenings again. And it seems a bit much, really. Uh, I, don't, I, I think I might be in the doghouse if I do that. I thought I'd better be a good husband. <laughs> and it's, um, her, yeah, her birthday is actually when she's in the UK. But um, it's kind of like she's got the downs coming over and what have you. And because it's... Uh, it's my birthday meal, even though it is her birthday, it'll be a week later or so. Right, so that's on there like that. And there is a plate. Not a, not a porcelain plate, this type of plate. And the idea of this type of plate is it, well, takes up the way, it takes up the gap. So you can adjust it. So that plate there has got to go in there. But I want to make sure that is greased up or oiled up, whatever. I don't want to get grease or poke squeeze out all over the place. I can't worry about that. Clean up afterwards. I want to make sure everything is greased. I'll make it rub smooth. I don't want things pitting because the pitting will create resistance, will create friction. So um, yeah, I should really wear gloves, really, shouldn't I? I've got some gloves. I won't put them on. There again, they just constantly get holes in them. And that's my excuse. So that's gonna go on there like so. I can get to the grub screw there, which is quite handy. Okay, so that's fine. That's going to go in there like that, in line with that edge of this car. Like that. Yeah. Yuck. And then, God, it feels so much nicer. It feels more fluid now. Like it's, uh, you know, smooth. Now, there's a series of grub screws that we've got in half. They've got little nuts on and stuff. There's these ones here. 
and they will provide that they, they'll basically where this is hit this um milk plate they'll go into that milk plate so we'll put one in there like so there's little dimples in the milk plate little adjustment plate here oh shim there's little dimples those bolts are sitting there so this doesn't slide out Things have to do with it, a bit of woodwork then. Eh? So it's going to go in there like that. Where's that arrow key gone? There's that one. Is that one that comes through the glass. Just grab it before I lose it. So we'll need it here in that. So that's going to go on there like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, the light has gone up. Light the seam! Light! Light the seam! Right, I need to order some more cables for this, um, the cameras. Now, what I want to do, I want, oh, I can't afford it then, but when I can afford it, I want to get a, I don't know if you realise, in my, um, studio, where I do my, my live streams for the other channel, I have a thing called a stream deck, and it allows me to stream at from different angles and stuff like that or do other stuff which can't really bring it so it's too mucky but there's a device that you can get called atm mini pro and it allows you to just do uh to attach hdmi input devices which should be cameras or video cameras and stuff like that to get much better quality at the moment it's using these web cameras which aren't brilliant you know they're okay but they ain't bring quality and being so we've got our internet is improving next month we're gonna have Fibre's going in, yeah, it's at long last, fibre! It's been a long wait. So we won't be um, streaming via uh, 4G anymore in the house, or the workshop, it'll be via fibre, so it's improved, should improve things. Right, now the idea of these plates is you basically, you have to adjust the plate so it uh, takes up any potential slack. So basically you've got tight sized pans of grub screw in this, right? Well, that's to a point that grips it and then you go back a little bit till it slides and then you lock it off all right there, there will be some more adjustment needed and what that's done is it's taken up any slack in this in this dovetail arrangement so that, that's the idea so we you have to do that on all these because you want precision you need precision without that feels good Without precision, you'll um, when it gets to the chisel, there'll be too much movement, and the chisel won't actually, you know, when you bring the chisel down into the piece of timber, that'll come off. That's not try and actually enter at an angle, slight angle, as it goes in. You don't want that. You want it to remain perpendicular to the um, the workpiece. Because if it doesn't, every time you release it, it will grab the piece of wood and it'll jam. So now it's rigid. So it's got to go back a little bit. Make sure that it slides. Was that right? And then I'm tighten that up. Oh, maybe not quite as good as that. I want to straighten. There's movement in there, so that needs to be a bit tighter. This one needs to be tighter, it's definite movement. To be fair, it will need a later as well. So, right, and then there's another bolt. It's a bit odd, if you ask me. Which is one of these? I don't really know how, that, how that's supposed to work without a nut on it. But they're in there, just like, uh, like that one. To lock it off. To lock it, maybe? Oh, maybe it is to lock it. Maybe it's just to lock it. So you can put it in a certain position, and it stays there, and that's always the position it's in. I won't be surprised. Or is it a certain length, and it's just a certain length, and it's only goes in so far. So you don't lose it. Yeah, I think it, no, it isn't a lock. It isn't a locker. That's fine. So I'll just tighten that one up. 
requires a different uh, allen key. Yeah. Washers are quite important. I'm just going to jam the the actual thing against the side of the dovetail. Yeah, the the plate, the shim. What would you call that? that's tight enough got movement but it's not overly tight that's enough so now i can install this thing uh, oh hang on i was gonna clean this up da -da 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 -da. So it's, it's no bit of grip in those threads because i was literally doing it on the shingle and i was yeah dislodging loads of crap out of the driveway which obviously would not be a very good idea Leaving that in there because you have grit. The grit will work because, you know, well, grit is it's a stone, isn't it? After all. Grease in there. Dee 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 dee. Probably too much, but anyway. Then that's going to go on here. So. Move this forwards. Spin your hand a little bit. Right, so we've just hand off. At the moment the handle's jamming on the on the bench. So I'll get that into there. So slide it back, right? There's gonna be two nuts, two bolts. That's gonna be bolted onto there like so. And then this arrangement will then slide that carriage to and fro. So that'll be that that stage. I hope I am doing it in the right order. It's really annoying and embarrassing if I'm not. Right, now which bolts are which? Well, one, two, there'll be pairs of bolts. There'll be smaller ones in there. There's probably these ones. Yeah, definitely. Those. They've already been oiled, so they're not a problem. Alright. So let's slide that forwards. Oh, let me go back. Were they 12s? I think they were 12s, weren't they? My hands are all greasy. Oh, I don't know. I'll go indoors, I will, and I'll, I'll wipe them on the missus. Hi, missus! Oh, I'd be in trouble if I did that, wouldn't I? And then once that grub screw goes back in, I don't over tighten everything. If they work with this, then I'll worry about it then. So that Alan, that little um, grub screw's got to go back in that hole there. So, right. I'm assuming it's this one. There is no shorter one. It could be. It might actually be the short one. There's only one of them. We'll see. So it happens. We will see. It'll be alright on the night. That's what it'll be. It'll be alright on the night. So I'll work that in there like this. It's kind of. Uh, it's not exactly woodworking, is it? But, you know, sometimes you have to do these kind of jobs to keep everything working in their workshop. That's going to go in there. So it's good. That's good. In. Good, good, good. I think that is the right um, bowl. Yeah, it's, that's definitely the right one. So we have to tighten that up. So, ah, look at that! Oh, he's spinning round like a good one it is. Oh, it can't be bad. Oh, it's what I keep spinning it. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Did he die? Something like that? What is it, whatever his name was again? Crazy Geezer, he was in Big Brother. You sold the rights to to that song and regretted it. <laughs> a bit tight at this point. Might have to, ooh, might have to slag at them. That's that tight there. Oh, it is long. It only tells me that the taper, uh, you know, the dovetail must be slightly wider at this point. Doesn't make any real sense, does it? Right, so they need slackening. One of them's too tight.
Skate Tipperary is a long way back home. Suck that out. Oh, sing, sing along. I can't find the spanner I was using. Do that one. Can I bury it? Maybe. So, well, that'll do. Oh, hang on, that's meant to be there, but I went knocked off. That might be why. Try that. Nope, not that one. Try that one. Right. Why is that one fun? It's not that one, is it? it Shouldn't be. It's then. Oh, might be in there. Hmm. Ah, I know what it is. It's these two nuts in. I've tightened up and I shouldn't have tightened up yet. What's probably happened is this plate here has gone a bit skewy with the thread. So it's getting close to the fixed point. It's probably pushing on one side of the thread. That's what I'm guessing, but that's what I'm or assuming. Yep, I was right. There you go. So this, I should have tightened up here first, make sure it goes all the way up, and then tighten these bolts here. You can see that, can you see that? No. <laughs> these two bolts here were tight, and because that was at the end of the shaft this end, it was pushed on one side of the shaft. What I should have done is pulled it right to before I tightened them up. So I've loosened them, and now I'm going to tighten them up, and I've got to readjust those on the side here, but... It's going to readjust it anyway, to be fair. So now, hopefully, that should move freely, which it does. Like that. Also means I do need to readjust these here because they're too slack now. My bag! Don't want it to be loose. I need to tighten. Tighten it so it doesn't move hardly, and then you just slacken it off slightly. Just about there. Do, 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 do. Do, do. There you go. That's good. I've seen you slack the movement there. Means that's going to have to be tightened up a little bit until it stops, until it won't move. Too much resistance, you're going to cause problems on these handles. It needs to be slightly off slightly. Just yeah, that's it. That way, it will be adjusting again. Well, so from beds in and settles down. Right, do I can do this or not? I don't know if I did. Oh, I did. There you go. Tighten up. Right, so those two nuts here tightened up now, and that's yeah, feels good. Feels about right. Enough resistance for it to actually do its job. But not so much resistance that it stops it from working properly. But that feels good. And that will settle in a little bit as well, because it's got a bed in, you see. Right, that's good, good, good. Any excess grease? Remove it, I can use it elsewhere. Yeah. Luckily, I didn't need to remove that um, mount on the back here for the compound. I was a bit worried about what happened. Remove it again to slide it on. But I didn't need to, which is good. Which is good. Right, it's all covered in grease, but so am I. Say the V. Oh. Right, so we've got the, the first part of the carriage on for the to and fro, but also to angle your piece of wood that way. Because this little, um, on this side, we have another screw, if I can show you. I'm not quite, it's not prison talk, no. We have this little yoke arrangement here with another rack and pinion. And basically, actually, have had a knob on there of some description. <laughs> oh, YouTube's policies have changed again. You mustn't swear or anything like that within the first eight seconds. Or not, and, and all. And anything that is regarded as. 
profanity, even if it's relatively mild, um, will, will demonetize your videos. So it's an, they already had similar rules, but they've actually made them even stricter. And it, it, they're all classed the same. So if you use the F word or use different prof words that was considered prof um, prof um, profanity, they, they, they're considered the same. But words like damn and stuff like that, they're fine. You can use those sort of words. But so, yeah, there's a few updates to, the YouTube, to YouTube's policies regarding monetization, just to make it a little bit harder. You know what they're like. So that should have a hand on here, like one of those, but it's missing. And that, as you can see there, you see that moving back to foot yeah, okay. That slides out, well, that tilts it that way. So that's, I suppose it is tilting it, yeah, to and fro tilt. So there's a lot of motions on this machine. So, yeah, it's quite a well-machined thing, really. You know, it's not a Sedgwick or any of them kind of big brands. But it's plenty good enough for what I need. Now, I've had it a few years, and that was, I bought it second-hand, um, basically to do, a, to do a job. In fact, I've got a few other machines around right here, which are going to go up for sale, because I need the money, and also they do a job. They do, well, they do a job for somebody else. I haven't used them for ages. Um, one is my other thicknesser. I've got, I bought a thicknesser last year before um, I, ne I needed the second thicknesser because I was doing a lot of spare cases. So I need, uh, my, my thicknesser over here, which is this machine, is a 300mm, 12 inch. Up on there, that multiplex, 12 inch. For my spare case, I needed fractionally more than 12 inches. Which my, um, I've got a box planer, so my, uh, the Tarbo box planer, it's like with them DeWalt or suitcase type planers. Because I bought new to do a particular job. And it did that job and I hadn't used it since. So it's just sitting there. I'm sure somebody else, you know, would find it very, very useful. So I'm going to sell that. Um, it's a good machine though, you know. The Tarbo is, it's a Metabo. DH330, something like that. But I don't use it, it just sits there. I sold my spindle molder because I don't use it, it just sits there. And it's in the way, actually. And there's other, other things I could do with getting, you know, that would get used. So, um, yeah. The problem is with anything like this, like this machine here was sitting in the uh, barn because I wasn't using it, I didn't have a use for it at the time. And uh, um, that's why I'm having to do all this. Because it was neglected. And the same thing potentially could happen to other machines. I don't, what's the point? Printers are really at any point. Alright, I think, I think, I think, I think, I don't know what you think, but I think something needs to be done. Hey, let's have a look at, um, before I do that though, where's my phone? Let's have a look at, let's have a look at the chat. You know, I poured that beer out and I haven't drunk it yet. Oh, come back, come back, chat's disappeared again. Come back, chat. Uh huh. Burn to surprise, there weren't more expulsions here regarding what I was saying earlier regarding Brexit. Now, Spain's tax receipts uh, rose humongously due to the pandemic. Now, uh, people paying by card rather than cash. Uh, oh, I see. It ruined the black economy. <laughs> that wouldn't help them. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. That is a good point. But for those who are working on the black, all of a sudden couldn't really earn any money. Um, money laundering here in France especially is extremely difficult. Um, well, anyway, in the EU, to be fair, pay money on, you know, working on the black. Not in money on, is it? Just working on the black. So, um, let's get that there. Do, do, do. Oh, am I in there? So, hello, whatever. Hi there. I hope you're well, buddy. Ah, it's burning. Burning. Marcus, you should have watched the video. You should have watched the video of you taking it apart. Oh, why? What have I done? Oh, what, I put it back together again? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> then maybe I'll know how to put it back together. I'm winging it, aren't I? I'm winging it. Makes it more interesting. Yeah. Do you need to make a hand off here? I might, you know, turn one on the lathe or just laminate one up or something. I don't know. It's, it's got to be strong enough to do the job. Um, to be honest, though, if I'm absolutely honest, once that's set at 90 degrees, Locked off, it ain't gonna get touched again. So maybe I'm not got maybe I'm not I don't know. But there again, the machine needs needs to be fully functional, doesn't it? 
<laughs> Chainsaw grease, syrup grease, liquid glop, sticky, sticky grease. Yes, it is. Just use some syrup. That won't work, won't it? No, it won't. <laughs> They're doing okay, says Shannon. Oh, so says uh, Susan. Shannon and Anna are busy studying for the exams. All stressful times for the kids and that. Oh, exams, oh my god. Well, they were the days. I can remember doing exams. I hated them. I wasn't that keen on school, to be honest. I used to sit there. Oh, you, yeah, you got all the stuff up on the, on the old blackboard at the time. You don't have all these smart boards like you got these days. But, you know, sit, sitting there, you know, they give you an instruction, what you've got to do. And I'd go off in a dream world. I'd be thinking about model aeroplanes and, you know, photography. All, all sorts of stuff other than what I was supposed to be thinking about. And then the... Yeah, when, when they go, time's up, and uh, I had done nothing. It's kind of how my mind works, you see. Yeah, I was kind of one of these people who just want to make stuff all the time. That's just who I was. I regret it in some ways, because obviously education is obviously very, very important. And we have instilled that in our kids. They've all got degrees and stuff. And I, I kind of, yeah, I got my degree later on in life. So it's, um, yeah, it's just one of the things. You feel that I kind of... uh. Give myself no favours. It's so important. Yeah, education. Obviously, it's, most people understand that, obviously. But um, when you're a kid, I'll never use that. Like French. <laughs> I don't need French. I'm never going to use that. <laughs> oh, my God. If only I knew. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. Oh, God, yeah. I can remember being at primary school. And my parents, they decided they are going to turn up for a change. Or, to, you know, to speak to the teacher during parents' evening. This was at St. William's Primary School. Well, they didn't really catch on schools in back then to whether or not you had a problem. And if you did have a problem, it would struggle with learning and stuff. They just, um, you know, kind of sit you to one side to learn on your own or, or give you, you know, you might get a bit of help if you're lucky. Well, my parents weren't that great with that sort of thing. Don't be wrong, my parents, my mum especially, she was, yeah, she's a very good mother. But she, she wasn't that, you know, she wasn't particularly bright herself. You know, she, um, you know, good person, good person. But anyway, they didn't actually pay much attention to the fact that I was struggling at school. Anyway, they were parents' evening. I said, oh, the teacher goes, oh, you've got to worry about Margus. Look over there, look what you made. I made this lighthouse. So I was only about five or something, five or six or something. I was quite young anyway. Um, and it was a, yeah, primary school. And um, I made this lighthouse, a working lighthouse with, with it had a, I can remember the, can you remember the, Plastic, the clear plastic, uh, I can't remember if it was a yoghurt pot actually, it might have been a yoghurt pot or was it an egg carton? Egg, like a clear egg carton, anyway, either way, and a bulb in it and I made a switch out of a paper clip and some drawing pins and stuff. So, uh, yeah, and a battery, and attached to a battery with a bit of tape and all it was elastic band, I can't remember now, but it's, it's a while back. Anyway, it was just about uh, toilet rolls and, yeah, a little lighthouse. <laughs> so you got to worry about markers. Okay, fair enough, I can make stuff. But there's been times in my life I think I could have done with a you know, much better education regarding especially English. Um, not maths so much, I'm quite good at maths, but um, yeah, felt a little bit left behind. And that makes you struggle, it makes you also, you make, also um, thing is, you feel a little inadequate at school in the sense that you're struggling, so everyone else is sort of racing ahead of you on certain things, and you end up in classes that your friends aren't in, and you, you just end up being on a bit on your own, to be honest. No, and as someone who wasn't really that interested in football, never have been and never will be, um, it was a yeah, it was a bit of a loss really, and that I kind of didn't progress that well while I was at school. And it kind of clicked though. When I got secondary school, I was not about second year in secondary school, year twelve. Anyway, it just all come come to place. It just clicked. And that was O level, so it was before GCSEs, literally just before. It came in the year after GSEs. We had 16 plus, which I did um, technology in and geography, yeah, in 16 plus. I think that was right, yeah. Long time ago. Right, should we get to the next stage? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think we'll put this on next. And that needs some cleaning up because at the moment it's covered in muck. So we'll grab that, which is the tower, right? Is it? Post, 
got to be here, that will stone's fall out. Like that bit. That has been cleaned up, but as you see the way it's been a bit wet and a bit rusty in places. So um, this needs a little bit extra care. That mounts on the back here. So, yes. Let's wipe it down. It's got a few chips and stuff in it. I think sometimes this is caused by moving from place to place and the machine being quite precarious when you get it on a sack bearer, it falls over. That's kind of what happened. But um, I'm not painting it up. No, I don't see the point. Just make sure everything is put of oil on it. I suppose if you could set it, it would be different, but I'm not going to. It's one of the machines that took me a long while to find it, to find a decent one. You know, a nice heavyweight one, and then uh, I don't want to get a situation where I want one and I can't find one again. So I'm not going to sell it. You see that? You can see that just about. A bit muck in there still. That's full of them and um, stones off the driveway. Oh, the nooks and crannies. Now this is a bush. I'll remove that for the moment. That's a bush for um, one of the other, um, the larger, the larger, uh, it goes up to an inch on this one, this machine. I suppose you can get bigger, but I wouldn't want to use inch anyway. I tend to use only half inch, about 12 mil, 12.7 mil um, drills anyways, to be honest. Anything, mm, saying that I do it three and a quarter, uh, three quarter, which is 20 mil, which is similar to... Or laying around, I thought I showed you yesterday, laying around there somewhere. But anyway, let's get on there. Make sure everything is clean. That is nice clean because this was full of like thick, grimy grease. That was. So I'm going to re grease it. I'm also going to run because it feels a bit not very clean. No, it's not. I run my hands out there, I feel like lumps and bumps and stuff like that. Not in the metal, but like stuff is still sticking to it. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use those DMTs, such as one of these. Little diamond sharpener. I'm going to use a bit of oil. I'm not saying this is the right way of doing it, it's just how I do it. It works anyway. And I'm going to just clean them up a little bit with um, a bit of white spirit and oil on here, and then run those um, sharpeners up and down. Just to clean them up, make sure there's nothing there that cause resistance. Yeah, there's definitely lumps there, I can see. Well, I think it's just. See, some of them might be just like the pressure washer didn't, you know, remove it. So, I might just run some sharp down there, like a old Stanley Blade. Yeah, one I prepared earlier. I bet you that is their lumps of grease. So, I'll just cut them off like that. Yeah, they are. Lumps of grease on there, they're stuck on there, got trapped and got old. Yeah, like that. I'll get rid of that. Oh, what am I going to make? I need to make something like out of wood, like you know, something substantial. I'll tell you what I could be doing, actually, not today. You know, once we get this out of the way, um, we want to put a door in between the front of the house and the back of the house. There used to be a set of double doors in there that we fit years ago, which are. Uh, Bit lightweight, so they were they were cherry, they were nice doors, but I want to put a big old substantial, almost like a big old front door, um, just a board door, door made of oak boards basically, like a, like a shed type door, really chunky, but quite pretty, um, in between. So, um, we made a bit of old sigil eye, extra iron work on a big knobbly, knobbly bits all over it. That's my idea. Um, we need to basically what we want to do is to save help with the heating. Because we did before, we want to trap the heat in one side of the house, the side of the house that we spend a lot of time. Um, and obviously, it'll do the same in the other direction. Otherwise, at the moment, what's happening is the heat is travelling up the stairs from the kitchen area, um, and then getting lost in our very because we're very high vaulted ceilings. And that we're not we, we don't live in the vaulted ceilings. I don't even you realise that, but we don't live in those. And as such, it's just um, well. Seems just a waste of energy. So I'd like to hold the heat down stairs as long as we possibly can. So we're going to put a door in between, stop some of the airflow between the two spaces. And being me and the missus, we're work, doing quite a lot of work together now because we're working on the websites quite a lot now. Um, and we're getting 
getting our t-shirts you know we, you know we make yeah we print t-shirts and stuff we'll print them but we we use print on demand services but we various designs that have been doing um and put in various places well we, we started our instagram shop but also uh what else was it? instagram red bubble we're getting onto amazon merch hopefully that gets approved very soon um yeah, it's been a bit of slow, a bit of a slog, and a bit slow. But then we've got the websites, but also we've got Etsy as well. So we're getting as many different places as we possibly can. It's quite hard though, because we look at the price and say we wouldn't pay up for that. You know what I mean? But people are though. You know, that's, you know, and we ain't got any choice what what we're charging because of taxation and uh, fees. Obviously, you've got to pay fees and everything. It's got to work, and anyway, it's, it's, it's trying to build it up and see what happens. And me and Mrs. So we sitting there in the office, and that, and she's sort of on one computer, and I'm on the other, and she's doing her bit. She's basically doing all the uploading and putting them on the t-shirts, on the apps, the designs on the t-shirts, and I'll be doing the websites or the designs. And it's um, yeah, it's quite nice actually to be able to sit there together and actually work together, you know. And also, this is quite like because she feels that she's achieving something, and she's bit, she's a bit had put to, um addicted to the statistics. She, every day she's looking at the statistics. Oh, we got more today than we got yesterday, which is obviously a good sign. More people saw what's on there it means it's growing. She likes that. She's excited. So um, yeah, that's how it goes. We have sold some stuff, so that is um, it is definitely improving and definitely working. But on the Etsy regarding. The woodwork stuff that I do on Etsy, I've sold quite a bit actually, quite a reasonable amount, which has been very handy over Christmas. I think many think many thermometers. I sold so many thermometers, mainly to Germany uh, and Switzerland. Well, the Switzerland's um, postage system is horrendous. A bit like the UK's. Now nah, it's in Brexit. I wonder why that is. Oh. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna a bit more clean up down there. Make sure everything's. A bit, of, a, bit of, a bit of light smear of oil on it. It gives me an opportunity to see whether or not anything else is trapped or nothing is going on. Heck, you old machine, though. You know? Can't beat cast iron stuff. You know, I've got my machete table saws and that, they're cast iron. And although they're blue and cold, we handle them in the winter. <laughs> At least they um, are substantial and they, they hold their, you know, hold themselves flat and stay flat. Oh, the variety, the modern machines over in the UK, they're far more considerable than what I've got here um, regarding the table saw. But that's good, you know, uh, you know but it, I couldn't bring it out. It's an old Wadkin, old Wadkin table saw. Yeah, the circular saw. So it's a brilliant machine, but it's just too heavy. Uh, too heavy to shift. At the time, you think I was going to need it, to be honest. Yeah. I'd love to have it now. I've got that jet super saw there. That's, it's a good machine. It's got its problems, but it's a good machine. I think if I replaced it, I'd go for a um, saw stop. Um, but if anyone's aware of it, it's very... Oh, it's brilliant. It's, it's really safe. A really safe machine. Literally... If I, you lit that well, blade is spinning, I'm not, I'm not advised that anyone does this. But if you touch that blade, the blade will throw itself into the deck, into into the machine, just disappear like that instantly. It's amazing. Do you know those like nappy sausages? <laughs> I did a video. Like that. <laughs> There's actually quite a few videos actually flying the boat like that. Um, where you, you you put it onto, I say it's oh, yeah, like on the sled. You try to cut the sausage. You can't cut it. You might get a little scratch on it, but it won't actually break the skin. On one of the knacky sausages, the blade just throws itself down. The only downside with it, every time it happens, you have to replace the blade. In some cases, but also the um, there's a there's a uh, like an actuator, like a mechanism in it, and that but that's buggered. That be broke because what happens is as the blade goes down, this kind of a blade break goes onto the teeth of the blade and stops it dead. But it's a sacrificial thing. So it's um you have to buy a new one every time. There's like eighty quid every t if it happens, you know. So hopefully you don't get no you know misfires. 
But to save your fingers. You know, I think it's worth it. <laughs> Don't you? Everything. Saw stop at school. Saw stop, as in saw and stop. Definitely worth consideration. Uh, well, I don't blow my light. It's gone dark again. I can't see. Where are you? Do, do, do. Light, light to see. Light. Oh, there you go. I've got light. Right. That'll teach me, won't it? I could put the other light on, actually. That would help, wouldn't it? That one wouldn't go off. Never mind. Anyway, so that needs greasing up on here. I'm not going to worry about that. What we're going to do is we're going to bolt that back on here. But we need to grease these two bare surfaces. Because I don't want them rusting, like I said earlier, in between. Got this strange stuff. Ow, 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 ow. Saw stop wouldn't help me there, no. Just track the finger. It's not on the bottom here. See the bare, bare metal surface here, cast iron. I want to make sure I've got a bit of grease on there. Got it. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Use the grease, the nasty bit of grease there. Reuse the grease. Clear that on the bottom here. Make sure that's nice and clean. Keep the old dirty wear. Same on here. That's a better idea. I'm going to make sure these, oh, the holes that got the um, the bolts are going to go into. Make sure they've got grease in them. I'm probably going to go over zealous anyway, but say they do. Oh my dirty old fingers. Covered in grease they are. Covered in grease. Right now that is going to go on to that. That's the plan. What do you reckon? Is it a good plan? I think it's a good plan. The spirit wrench. Oh, so heavy. I've got to get this back onto whatever I want to put it on as well. I do, when I'm selling that machine, it's on a base. It's like, it's like an old, um, well, it's actually the base that belonged to one of my uh, uh, band saws, um, which I put a top on. But it's got wheels on as well that I put on it, so I'll use that probably because it's got a nice wide base on it. How I used to have this mounted used to take a lot of space up because I had it in a way where I could do long pieces of timber like for doors and stuff and put like for your door you got like three three mortises in a door you see in a door style so um I'd have it mounted on there but it's, it took up a lot of space because I like I had a two um a two meter bench so I could do both sides oh, two and a half meters I think it was so you could do both sides oh I can hear the rain it's raining it is on oh here hear the rain Pit pat, pit pat. I'm singing in the rain. Right, all right, I've got bolts. What bolts are what? <laughs> it's going to be these big chunky ones. And if I remember right, it isn't. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not Allen bolts. Pretty certain it's not. It'll be these ones. Or those ones. Bigger ones. These ones. Those are the ones. Like that. And that one. Make sure you've got your washers on there. And they've got locking washers. Da, 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 da. The, see, the thing is, the more bits you fit back in, the easier it becomes because there's less options. That's what I say. They go on the other. Oh, God, I've got to lift that thing back in there as well, aren't I? Oh, God, that's going to be a nightmare. But we'll do it. We've got to. Otherwise, we won't, it isn't going to work, is it? Oh, dear. Oh, no. Ah, that's right, that's good. 17 mil. Is that new money or old money? I can't remember now. Oh, it'd be nice to cut a square hole. <laughs> Can't get the round peg in a square hole. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, right, so we've got that on there. That... Oh, see that there? Right, that's so. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's like magic. Like magic it is. 
My hands are, oh, hands are so greasy. Ah. <laughs> la 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 la. So, but, yeah, as we say, that, that tilts like so. And then you can lock it off. Or you can lock it up. There's a pin in the back, like a pull pin you twist around, which allows it to lock it in 90 degrees perpendicular. Um, which is basically where it's going to live. And then I'll tighten up the locks. There's a lock screw in the back here as well. So I'll tip that. So that's like in. So it's still not playing there. But if I, what I do is I'll position that, making sure that's at 90 degrees. And then I'll get the um, Allen key, because that bit, like I say, is a bolt in the back here. And then I'll tighten that off. Tighten that. So then, that, so then it can't move. And I'll hit the things over there. Over there you go. There she blows. Oh, this is all getting very exciting. It's nice to get that back into place. Back back into in some kind of uh, usable condition. Oh, it's with my beer. Do, 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 do. There is something about making things. Huh? It's, just, it's just nice. It really is. Keep fixing things. Yeah, I mean... You start coming together, but you can see that it's going to be a positive end result. Oh, what's going on here? What's in here? What are you saying here? Do, 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 do. Change all green. Susan DeWitt says a semester is a little easier as they both have uh, the same classes, but the next one they're in different classes. Oh, I see, yeah. So some of the more physical learners, um, if you. Some are more physical learners, yeah. And if you're doing something hands on and others. You know, good at the books, what have you. But don't ask them to put <laughs> together a flat pack. No, don't do it. Oh, my God. Some of the... <laughs> now, my, my kids, I've got some of my kids actually could do a bit of both. Darren, for instance, he's... um, He's worked for me, I suppose, but also he's very academic. Um, He's a nurse, I mean, he's, you know, he's really with them brains. Clever lad. Even Wayne isn't too bad um, doing stuff. He's not brilliant at it, to be fair. Stefan's a bit about um, just doing stuff. His brain is all over the flipping place. I don't know what's going on in his head. <laughs> um, he's a good dad, though, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's just different. We're all different, you know. Uh, it'd be nice to have a bit of both, wouldn't it? For me, you see, it's quite... Uh, not having those kind of academic, you know, those skills. And I, I very rarely read. But, oh, I'll say that. I read more the time, because obviously what I do on the other channel. But, I mean, actually... I, grab a book for pleasure and read it. Um, I've always looked for information to learn all the time. That's how my, my, my mind works. I, I love it. I love information. Uh, but for me, doing what I do regarding the websites and all the other kind of stuff, it's quite technical, some of it is. To be able to apply yourself both ways, I'd like to be, de be able to do that better. You know, um, I do have a very practical mind, a very... Um, Common sense, even though common sense is no longer that common. Common sense, I think I've got a bit of common sense in the sense of how I can progress through a problem through just pr practically because it's, it's the common sense way of going about something. Do you know what I mean? Um, it would have been common sense for me to actually take notes of actually how this thing is back together. <laughs> I'm going to put the other light on. Do, do, Put my light on as well, just in happens again. There you go, put the light on. Don't know why this keeps doing that. And so, it's on a PIR sensor, but it's got a timer on it, but the timer doesn't seem to be the same all the time. One minute's long, next minute's short. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I do wish I had more academic uh, skills. I, I, I think I'm a little bit dyslexic in a way. Um, my attention span isn't that great on some things, you know. I, 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 short projects, things that are quite quick to do, are probably the best thing for me. Uh, da, 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 won't, won't the paint reduce the absorb? Oh, hang on, what's going on there? Do, 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 do. Rock wall covered with hesse. I'm getting confused now. Okay, up, 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 up. here we go. Some are more physical learners. Yep, uh, they are. But I suppose they have flat pack. God no. <laughs> How many times I've seen people who worked for me, and people are supposed to be quite good at this stuff, and you realise, hang on, you're not very good at this, are you? And they put the screws right through the flipping sides of the um, flat pack, you know, and you, see, you push a bit of the veneer out or something like that, because they've been a bit overzealous with a screwdriver. You know, battery screwdriver, they push the screw in too far, and then it popped out the other side. 
you know, stuff like that. No finesse. Rock wall covered with hessian. Rock wall covered with hessian. I'm, I'm confused. Confused. Very true, Suzanne. Left school at 15, three O levels English, French, and history. Uh, wish they allowed us to do woodwork. Ah, I loved physics, but my maths wasn't up to it. Yeah, I did um, physics at school. I did, I did enjoy it, and I did struggle with it at times. Sometimes it was quite, quite difficult. All the formulas and stuff like that as well. I did struggle with that. But I enjoyed it. It's a subject I did, did actually enjoy it. So because I enjoyed it, I did okay at it. Um, woodwork, though, I did do woodwork at school, which I was very pleased to do. But do you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to do metal work as well, but they wouldn't let you do both. So what you'd obviously pick an academic subject, which I understand that. But I'd been better off doing metal work than doing geography, for instance. It made a lot more sense for someone like me. Uh, I keep meaning to ask you about a good cheap way round to proof. Oh, to soundproof a room. Now, my eldest is um, starting up a live stream and needs to reduce sound in uh, and out of the room. Uh, thought about using carpet liners, tiles. Okay, various ways of doing this. If you've got noise elsewhere, and let's say if somebody's got a, tele a TV on, one is settings. Now, regarding anything like this, if you're doing, if you want to do live stream, if you can get yourself a reasonable microphone, it don't have to be absolutely crazy, stupid, expensive, but a reasonable microphone. Even this thing that I'm using on this stream, I look a bit far away from it at the moment. This thing. And... <laughs> can you see it? Yeah, that. Oh, there you can't see it. Yeah, it's my crazy height adjustment. Ah, can you come down here? This one end. This is an the moon. A uh, moon. <laughs> Probably made under different ma names as well. But about 20 quid. USB microphone. And that's what I'm using at the moment. And it does actually... If I turn it around and give you that idea. I know it's live stream, so it might not be quite the same. But um, oh, that's what you ought to do as well, isn't it? So uh, ignore the booming <laughs> compressor in the background. But let's do a little test. Let's do a sound test, shall we? Okay, sound test time. When, when, the, when the compressor stops. Oh, there it goes. It stopped. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Not a lot of people know that. No. Oh. Bill and Ben, the flower pot men, they went to bed together. No, I won't complete that one because it's a little bit much. Yeah, we'll do that. That was a little bit dirty. And I talked about that earlier, weren't I, about how you get demonetized for... Uh, yeah, don't do that. So, yeah, anyway, it's uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's that little microphone. These, this cost me 20 quid. I don't know what they are now, but when I bought this, it was uh, it was 20 euros. And it's a USB microphone. What I will say about it is its high-pitched tones are not, um, aren't so great. But I've got quite a high pitch. I'm a bit of a squeaky. I've got a bit of a squeaky voice at times. A bit husky at that moment. But, but anyway, it seems... To, I think it works for my, my voice anyway. That seems to be okay in here. But settings. So once you've got a microphone that you feel that it's going to produce relatively good results, what you want to think about then is your settings. If you're using OBS software, which is free, you can put a limiter on it. You can use a limiter. So, for instance, it only picks when, for instance, you start talking, it will trigger the microphone. So if you're not talking and there's noise in the background it, it, and it's only faint, but it's there, It'll cut it off, yeah? So you can filter that out. So there are things you can do to help. But regarding preventing sound coming in, now when I was in the music industry, when we had our radio station, we had some rehearsal rooms. And how we done it, now this is, this is a bit on the extreme side, the ceilings were full of sand, literally. It was all double boarded, so there's a lot, a lot of plasterboard. And plywood. I said, no, 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 it was a sheet of OSB plus, uh, plywood. OSB, sorry, Orient Strand board. Or was it Shutterman ply? I can't remember now. It was one or the other. Anyway, it was a thick board, 18mm thick board, screwed to the sins. Um, and then we plasterboard to create the finish. Uh, but on top of that, we loaded it up with sand. Literally. Full of sand. So it was like having a concrete slab, effectively, above your head. Luckily, it didn't collapse, but no, it wouldn't, because a big old joist. But anyway. That is one way. That's extreme, though. 
other ways you can soundproof a room. It's not as easy as you do soundproofing plasterboard. But some people just use duvets and stuff. Literally. Because one of your biggest problems isn't going to be external sound. It's going to be sound bouncing around inside the room. If you can prevent that from happening, you'll clean up your audio big time. So if you've got low ceilings, are a problem. If you've got hard floors, is a problem. Any hard surfaces or square room, it's all a problem. So what you have to do is you have to put obstructions in the way. Obstru- yeah, obstructions in the way. So it could be in the case, you've seen the, the egg crate foam that people put on the walls in their studios. And the idea, it breaks up the bounce. So if you've got a room that's perfectly square, smooth ceilings, smooth floors, smooth walls, you're going to create an echo. The sound is going to effectively leave your mouth, enter the microphone, right? But also, it's going to go past the microphone, it's going to bounce off that wall over there, come back again, a few seconds or micro, you know, fraction of a second afterwards. That creates that kind of echo sound. In some cases, it can sound quite good, like a stadium sound or something like that. But if you're doing recording or streaming, you ought to try and remove, reduce that. So you ought to soften the walls up and soften the surfaces. So it could be in a case like, for instance, duvet. Some people put duvet covers, hang them up on the walls, blankets, anything like that, rugs, anything like that, all helps. The other thing that helps is to reduce the amount of area or the space that you're working in. So effectively, you create a cubicle around you, which could also be from, I don't know, like sh- curtains or something, just literally around you will make a difference, make a huge difference, in fact, including cutting out noise from external noises from outside. Um, but it isn't easy because sound doesn't just bounce on surfaces, it reverberates surfaces. So effectively, these surfaces, they can become... Oh, blew it now, there we go again. Oh, sorry, let's leave it like that, it'll be fine. These surfaces become uh, like reverberations, almost like speakers, effect, like like like, um, like a tannoy. Yeah, you know, like a... You know, when you think you speak, a megaphone, like a megaphone of, of an existing noise or sound. So, ideally, he obviously wants to work in an environment where these sounds aren't apparent. That, let's say, for instance, times of day when people don't have the TV on, for instance, or a load of ding going on around the house. Um, maybe it might be while he's doing his live stream to let him stay up a little bit later or something, where everybody else is abed. So you haven't got all these noises. Just, just an idea. It really depends, really. Because don't forget, when you live stream, you're not just live streaming to people in your country. You're live streaming to potentially other people around the world. And their time zones are not going to be the same, are they? So anyway, it's my, it's my thought on it, um, for what it's worth. But there are things you can do. And the simple things are soft, some kind of um, soft materials to prevent, to block sound, but also to prevent the, the bounce. Because that, that is one of the biggest problems in any recording space. Is that sound bounces from place to place to place? Now, I'll give you an example about this this space in here. In here, you might have noticed in this workshop there's some strange looking things on the ceiling, there's some strange looking things on the walls, and strange looking things on the cupboard doors, which I'll show you. That's what. That might be the easiest way to explain it to show you. I know it was kind of like toy version from what this is. What here? Can you see them? They're all this to break the sound. That's all they are. They don't matter. <laughs> They're full of um, fiberglass insulation with an old sheet stapled over them. I'm in the workshop, don't we, now? But also, over there, on all those units all there, because they're a problem, yeah? All those sort of boards on there, they're not boards, they're actually about two inches thick. Screwed to the front of them, but also got foam in them as well. They've got, um, it has to be a foam, you can't use polystyrene foam because that's the gas going to come, that won't work at all. But it needs to be something that the sound can go into and become trapped. Same over here. Well, exactly the same over there. So when I was um, doing with the whiteboard, so I used to use the whiteboards in the videos for that. I might start doing it again actually. Sand bags all over the place. See that thing above my <laughs> above her? That thing above there is actually a bed. <laughs> that was mounted in a wooden frame and then covered with a flipping another sheet stapled on just so it ties it up so it could. Okay, they're purple sheets. These are just stuff I already had. Okay, yeah. It's a bit dark, but that itself becomes like a soundboard above your head. It's a soundboard right there, guys. So in our studio, having all three in my office, also in the studio upstairs, we create these soundboards using boards and old blankets and stuff like that, and fill a bit of fiberglass behind. 
and does exactly the same thing. You're trapping the sound that escapes. Yeah. So predominantly, what you want to do is you want to try and make sure the sound enters the microphone, and it's the only place it's going. It's not going anywhere else. Bang, bang, stop anything else, because that's one of the biggest problems with audio. If you start right, you'll finish right. Sorry, I'll just uh, you just got me on a subject that I'm quite interested in. <laughs> uh, carpet tiles and stuff like that. I don't know if they'll do much regarding stopping the sound getting through, but they will help prevent um, that bounce. Uh, there's lots of if you've got if you can afford to do that. There are lots of um, materials that you can buy um, that reduce sound, such as the you can buy packs of like uh, 300 mil square. And four and fifty mils, you know, different sizes, egg crate type foam that will help as well, and it'll also help sound from external sounds because the sound gets trapped in the foam. Yeah. Basically, any any sound that bounces, you want it to be broken down into less of a problem. If that makes any sense. Uh, I would suggest egg. Oh, here you go, Peter Dallas. This is egg crates. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, egg cartons. That would or anything that, that prevents it from the squares. Uh, they they do them here in three hundred uh, squares for three hundred eggs. Ah, oh, for thirty eggs. Yes, that's a good point. Actually, you talk about the cardboard ones. Yeah, uh, same here. You get like the ones from you get them from. I think it's Lidl's or Aldi. They do the crates of thirty eggs. Also, I'm um, in the Marche as well. Um, I don't know what it is in uh, the Netherlands though. Netherlands, yours or Belgium? I can't remember. Belgium, I think. Mean, Belgium. Yeah, but that they would obviously work, and you can put a coat of paint on, light a light coat of paint on them if you want. Don't make, don't mustn't block the the the, the paper if it makes any sense. So you can paint, or you use a watercolor on it work if you want to make them colors, whatever. So that's some, that's some of the things to do. But you can buy the foam squares with like, that look like egg crate, all different shapes and stuff. But you want to try and prevent the room from being square, so any obstructions will make a difference. Won't paint, uh, won't the paint reduce the absorption? Yeah, you don't paint anything if you help it. Um, because that will, yeah, Bernard's right, that will, it's just, yeah, it doesn't work. You, what, what it will do is, you will stop them on the absorption regarding the crate. What it will do, if you do, even if they're painted, they, they will break up the direction. Cause that's the main reason why they're all like, you use them kind of like pointed, like little peaks. Instead of the sand being able to bounce off a flat surface at 90 degrees, or whatever, at the same angle it hits it at. It'll just disperse it into all different angles. So effectively, it, it makes it less of a problem. There's all things you can do. There's lots of things you can do. Bernard was hidden by what? I didn't, I didn't hide you. Am I still streaming? I am, and I. I better just double check that. <laughs> What's it, man? <laughs> How did I do that? I didn't even touch it. Bernard was hit. I didn't. Right, I'm getting a bit confused here. Why that is the case? Oh. Yeah, I should be right now. Are you okay, Bernard? For some reason, you were... Oh, unhidden. Okay. Sorry, Bernard. I don't know how that happened, but apparently I managed to hide you somehow. I don't know how I managed to... I must have touched something I shouldn't have touched. <laughs> How to do that? Uh, won't the paint reduce the absorption? Yeah, I suppose you're right there. Sorry, Bernard. Can, can, can you can you um leave me a, a chat? Make sure it's okay. I think it says here that you know on here. Oh, brilliant! Oh, brilliant! Oh, you're back. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to do that. I don't know how hell I managed to do that. I managed to somehow hide you. <laughs> that was not deliberate. Um. Maybe slowly, uh, slightly, but make of course just keep them. Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome back. He just answered your question thoroughly. So, 
Uh, getting back to it later will be good. Uh, yes, you're still on. Yay, cool. Cheers, Pete. Cheers, Pete Dallas. I used to have the plans for an original LBC... What? Really? Bernard used to have the plans for the original LBC Studios in London. They had three inches of sand on the studio ceilings. That's what we used to do in our rehearsal rooms. That's a job. <laughs> but there's not much for me to hide. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> I don't know how I managed to do that, but I obviously did. Anyway, should we get on with what we're doing? <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, but if you've got any questions or any um on that, you yeah, just send us a message or social and, and I'll um I'm happy to do my best to help if I can. You know, if you um, if you've got any problems. If he's, I don't know how he's doing his stream. Is he using OBS software or is he doing it directly on his phone or another device maybe? Or maybe he's not using... Um, is he doing it via YouTube or Instagram or how is he streaming? Yeah, there's various ways of doing that. Um, th there are some other providers, some like Streamlabs and stuff like that. And they do a free service as well as a paid service. But they put their they put the Streamlabs labs, um, logo on, on your stream, which is a bit ugly. Um, but uh, if he's doing it on a PC... Um, or computer or some description. OBS software is brilliant. It takes a while to get your head around it, but once you do, it's absolutely brilliant. The big problem is... Oh, she, sorry. Um, she starts her stream late in the evening, so the sound from outside the room... Oh, come back, come back. Do, 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 do. Um, the stream from outside of the room... Do, 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 uh... Outside the room, so put up uh, an acoustic curtain, but still have a problem. And it's after everybody goes to bed. It it's not quiet though. If might need what I look at happen a limiter on the microphone. If you use an OBS, there's a free um, what they call a filter that you can use to fit the uh, to use a limiter, and you just set it whatever you want to set at. Don't set it too far because it, it sounds a bit robotic when you're talking, but just enough just to. When you're not talking, it just cuts off the residual sound. But obviously, when you start talking, it will pick up any sound that is outside as well. But normally, if you're actually um, speaking, it'll, that should be enough to overpower it, to be honest. Yeah, it isn't easy, Susan, but it's a learning curve, you know. Hello, Gingers. I hope you're well. I not be sorry at all. Nice to have you here. Anyway, what we're doing is we're putting this thing back together. This machine over here. So, uh, yeah, it's quite good to... To see it coming back together, to be honest, because it's, I'd like to be able to use it. There you go. La 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 la. There we go. Uh, back we go again. Anyway, let's put this microphone out of the way. There you go. Right. Next stage. Oh, it's exciting. Right, so, is it worthwhile putting that bit on next? The big old chunky bit that's a pain in the neck to get on. Or that bit? What do I take off first? I, put, I took that off first, didn't I? So I'll put that on next. I'll do this bit next. Which is never part of the carriage. Put them over there. Put them over there. Put them I'm quite fortunate to have this machine really because it's um it's well you can't get them you know they're, they're like a bit like gold dust to get hold of these you know you get plenty of um mortises uh, not, but not with the compound but not with this where you can make it rock backwards and forwards you know it's uh there's not many of them available especially second hand Good, that's good, that's good. That also has one of these plates. That's a longer plate, it doesn't travel much further. So that basically goes on there like so. And these screws, they, they lock into these little dimples. Can you see? No, probably not. Yeah, these little dimples here. They, these these uh, not lock screws. They're, these ones for adjustment, and that one's just to stop that from... I don't know what that does, to be honest. It does something. That slides it backwards and forwards. So... I'm going to grab the other bit of the carriage that's going to go on there. That's what I'm going to do. Oh. Dee dee dee. Make sure I can see what's going on. Aha. Right. Oh my god, let's take my workshop. 
I'm looking at the camera and there are all these bits everywhere. Tidy up. Oh, oh my god. Whoa, he's playing something. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's like a 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 big. Oh, so the here, this pinion gear here, that one, goes on to this little pinion gear on the end here. You can just about see that, that, that there. So then I can use the handle and roll that backwards and forwards, so that side backwards and forwards and use that handle. That's the idea. Coming together. But we need to clean this up a little bit more on the bottom here. There's still a bit of grime on this, uh, on this carriage. Well, the top part of the carriage, basically the table. I can feel it, it's all lumpy here. There's a stop on the end here, so you can't slide it too far on that end. So I'll, I'll leave that on at the moment. So we need to either get a bit of a wire brushing. Pressure washer obviously wasn't enough to get rid of all that. And I'll run the uh, sort of diamond sharp look up there as well, I think. Not exactly woodwork, but it's a woodwork at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make some doors, or a single door, which will be a bit like a shed type door, but it's um, going to be made out of old uh, floorboards, old oak floorboards. Now, um, look at this there, there's. In places, it's actually got a build-up of yuck, of goo, of nasty stuff that we don't want there. So I'm just going to run a screwdriver to make sure we can push that out. Yeah. I could actually just remove that and clean that up on the wire wheel. Wire wheel. Not a bad idea, actually. I might do that. If it comes off easily... Once the actual hand screws come out easy enough. Look they do. Everything is so easy, isn't it? I thought everything would be really difficult to do. So remove this. I'm gonna clean this up on the wire wheel over there. So it's a bit I put it a bit full of yuck. We don't want yuck. Yuck's not good. This is basically the table that slides back and forth left left and right, but also will tilt. It should, ooh, should, come on, it's not stuck, it's stuck down. I don't think there's any, uh, yeah. Rub them out. Okay, what is that stuff? Oh, I don't know why, it's actually in a slot. It's got to come out that slot. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my own for 10 days next week. From tomorrow, I'm going to be up oh, from Monday, so 10 days. Just leave me, she is, for a whole 10 days. Oh, when the cat's away, the mice will play. <laughs> well, I don't think I have a lot of time for that. Got to walk with the dog, got to feed the dogs, got to brush the dogs, got to give the dogs treats, and all that jazz. All that kind of stuff, you know what it is for dogs. All the stuff to make the dogs happy. And then I've got to try and, you know, earn a little bit of money as well. And then do this, you know, you too. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that definitely is a good idea, I think, if I show you, because it's everything is really, it's old grease, that's what it is. 
old nasty grease. I've already crash washed all this, got loads of stuff off it. Look at that, yeah, nasty. Got chew in the back. I wouldn't know it because I've never had chewing tobacco. It's like, I don't know, uh, it's like a licorice stick. Yeah, that's it, maybe. Oh, God, it is bad. So, it's not very good, is it? So, I'm going to take it over here. I can't take it with me because the cable's not long enough until they get some more cables. But, you'll better see. So, I'll go over there. I'm going to go over there. You might see my bum. <gasps> no, don't look at my bum. Look how big it is. Right. <laughs> I haven't finished it, but I just want to show you the difference. You see, that's where I've just been running over the wire wool, wire wool, wire wheel, and that's what I haven't. But it cleans it up nicely, and I'm sort of trying to get into this um, pinion gear, into this uh, rack as well. You see on this side here, it's just, yeah. Anyway, mumble mumble. <laughs> Massive improvement, I think. Yeah. Nasty. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay. You know what? It's my woodwork bed, it's all now covered in grease. <laughs> oh dear. Every so often what I do is this bench, it's this bench here, I've got a big you know, sand on the coarse disc and this thing goes looby on it and flat off and make it a bit more, uh, how to put it, presentable again. The problem is when you just keep doing things like this, it just, all that crap ends up on your workpiece. So, um, isn't very good. Nope, it isn't. La 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 la. Hello, just for the end of the videos, I hope you are. Can I uh, remember on the farm having to clean various tools, the grease attracts so much dirt and grime, they're impossible to keep clean. You're not wrong, because that's kind of what's happening with this. Sometimes in a woodworking environment, what are you doing? You're creating sawdust. That's the whole point, isn't it? You know? That's what you do, you make sawdust. Right. I know we don't get many people on here yet, but hopefully 
in time, you know, it's not happening overnight, does it? I'm going to have to attract more people to the stream. But I need to improve the the quality of the video and stuff, uh, the cameras, and and be able to change. I'd like to have a camera in every position, is what I'd like. I'd like a, a decent camera over the bench. I'd like one directly over the top of the bench, looking directly over the top of what I'm doing. Also, one so I can switch the one off of me so I'm not talking to the camera. But so I just press a button and it's all it's kind of automatic, which you can do. So I'm saying do it with um, Stream Deck or the ATM Mini, which I would like to get at some point. Well, I can afford to do so. But then I can use better cameras, you see. Being we've got um, decent internet coming into this place next month. Oh, look how exciting it is! I hope I can make use of it. The idea is that I suppose if you can improve the experience for people, then maybe people hang around for longer. So, um, while the missus is away, I will be doing going live a lot more on the other channel as well. Just casual ones, you know, just the casual vibes. That's the plan. I'm not saying the missus stop me doing that, she does prepare to, she's very good. She's a good last friend. She drives me insane at times. <laughs> so they go, I'm sure I do the same. Actually, I'm pretty certain I do. <laughs> I'm a sod. I am a sod. I know I'm a sod. Yeah, Caroline's a very here. Oh, I've got a driver also. Oh, speaking of the devil. Yeah, I'm live. What's up, Dan? What's that? Oh, red bubble. Yeah, yeah, what's the t-shirt and stuff. We can do that. So it's night, can't we? Right. Yeah. New pastoral rights for the dogs. Oh, pastoral rights for the dogs. Not for me, for the dogs. It's all about the dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. You're right, Dan. Put 10 euros on my, put 10 euros on my phone. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Wow. Yeah, since Brexit, Mrs. she has to do, um, good roaming and stuff. It's all changed, isn't it? Got to, uh, she's got another card, a uh, gift gap or whatever it is. Or is it EE? Yeah, yeah, well, I can't remember those. So I've got to put some credit on there for her. You could do it yourself to be honest. Oh my god, last night, oh god, I'm trying the bank, our bank has changed the security. We've got the security code thing, but they've done secure, a thing called security code plus now. And it's um a bit of a nightmare because what's happened is we can't we can't do our bit of the bank there at the moment. Um so it's a, a bit of a nightmare. So we have to apply for another security code. And we we got it. We put it all in, done all these things. <laughs> Still got that as access. <laughs> it's a nightmare. So we've done it again. We've done 24 hours, see what happens then. There you go. But anyway, we were doing this last night. You just sort of the thing cards over and stuff like that, make sure the phones are identical to what it was before. Just to be able to, because you have to have like an authenticator to get the code and stuff. So um, we're doing all this stuff. <laughs> it's just catch quick from change the flipping sim card over the really strong i have to admit they are fiddly little things aren't they you know the sim cards get changed over getting the phone and what have you but oh uh, god uh, that's frustrating <laughs> and then the number comes through on the phone she couldn't see it so you've got your glasses on you still can't see it it's, no i can't see it what are those glasses actually doing anything <laughs> are they placebo glasses i thought right they must be placebos Right, so that's clean. That's clean there. Okay. But I've got to flip it over because the other side is rusty. And this is we've got the sacrificial board here. We'll be going back on top of here. But I don't want all this corrosion being trapped behind it because all it's just carrying corrosion, creating pitting. So we need to remove all this nastiness. Nasty it is. Let's do it like that. Or I could get something. Uses electricity. That's 
screw one in, the screw one, or I'll be hitting one of them, which goes into the angle grind, which will be a lot faster. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do something ferocious. I like ferocious. Right. That's a little Bosch. Little Bosch um, angle grinder, which we use for mad sand. We'll just sand things like beams and stuff like that. So you've got to be a little bit careful, to say the least, in the sense of uh, how you can spin that fast, you tend to go out and it wants to go all over the place. What we're going to do is we're going to remove that sand in this and put the wire wheel in. No guards, no, oh dear, terrible. Right, plug that in over here, make sure it's off before you plug it in, grinds in, you have a fixed button. And we can wire wheel all that up, wire brush all that up, make it all yeah, clean again. And then I'll put some grease, I might just lacquer it even, put a coat of lacquer on, so it's not surface that's going to be exposed. Um, and covered up, so I might just put some lacquer on it instead. It's clear lacquer. I don't know if I need to put anything on that. I was going to put some lacquer on there. But I'd have to completely and utterly degrease it first. Say that, but as you see that with fingerprints, it's really greasy. I might really need. Let's make sure that's clean there. Yeah, we've got a son here at the moment. He's going back on Monday, and Carol's going back with him. Makes it easier for him when Carol goes back with him because um, he's disabled, to see, so yeah, traveling, what have you, on the train or whatever, just makes life a bit easier for Matthew. But yeah, so, yeah it's God, but it's not. He's a bit concerned actually because things are not looking that great in the UK, are they? Regarding things like that, especially with disability benefits. And stuff. It's on that pitch payment. Um, they keep changing the rules. Everything keeps changing all the time. There, 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 there. Put right. a couple of holes in there. We'll clean them out, really. Get the airline. Push a little bit of grease in each of those little holes so the bolts go in, they'll seal, help protect the threads from any potential corrosion. Yeah, this thing here. A 
you'd have to pay a reasonable amount of money for a mortar like this now, I think. So, well, that could fit nicer. It's quite a considerable, considerable bit of kit. You know, there's no, uh, there's no, um, no uh, little uh, washers on there. Make sure this. Right, that one there. Yeah, so, just making sure that the iron bolts, they fill up with crap, you see. Just making sure they've got no rubbish in them. And that this pin rack here is going to have to go onto that pinion that's on there. So I'll slide it in place. Uh. Get it out! Oh, what? I thought it fell. Pop there, it's fell. Hmm. I mean, it's not one that goes in. The other side, that one isn't. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Make sure they're all part way in. On tight. Look at that one. Oh, that's there. Once we get started, you're okay. That's it, that's it there. Tighten that up. See a fair amount of grease on this bit, I think. So you've got the pinion, and then you've got these two dovetails. Dovetail slides. No, it's not going in. It was, but it's not now. Always not going in. That's odd. Doesn't want to go all the way in for some reason. Those others are, but that one don't want to catch. Let's remove it. Just tip it up. Oh, it's up in the thread. Oh, yeah, and the thread's... Ah! Shedded the thread. Shredded. Yeah, that was no good. Bagger! What? Let me find another one. Ba -ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. Hmm, that's not helpful. 
literally shredded the thread. I think you ain't getting things, so. Well, let's tighten these ones up, see if we'll find another bolt. It's got something to say, isn't it? Hope not. That one's alright. No, I ain't shredded that, have I? Always surprised. Well, I would be surprised because I don't see how you can. Those three are okay, two are okay. But that one's shredded as well. Right, really? Bum, 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 bum. I do have some, whether they could be Allen bolts. Yeah. Right, No, that one will be all right. It's partly shredded. No, that will be okay. Do that a bit. Provided I can get that started, that will be okay. They are the right bolts, aren't they? <laughs> I've been right, wrong, haven't I? I'm trying to get the wrong bolts in or something soon. Pretty certain the right ones. Yeah, that one. This is when you regret taking it apart, isn't it? Because you can't. Alright, don't tight, don't over tighten. You can't get this one started either. Bugger. No sense. Hmm, it's not very good. There's actually not a lot going into the thick enough. I think those bolts could have done with being a bit longer. What's going on with that one, right? Just not that one. I'm going to find another bolt. So far, I think, okay, that one. That one. Oh, I don't know if that'll work. I'm too short, I think. They're all afraid of that, ah, but we've got M6s. Do I have M6s? La 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 la. So again, I could, if it isn't M6, I could make it into one. That's what I'm going to do. I think I'll get the tap die out if, if that is long enough that it is to replace that one. Oh, that one, sorry. This is BS, this BSP thread. Bit of standard thread. Ooh. 
Well, it's a it's expanded the works, isn't it? Right. Which below has got that one, eh? Got that out there. Right, is it going to be too short? If I. Mm, that's pretty much the same length. I'm saying I could tap it or die. First of all, just check so we've got all over half. What's in there? Ooh. I know it's not really correct because you know not the green. Oh, what's that one? What's that one like? Oh, okay, that'll work. I'll just have to grind the top off there. Eh? Right, I've got a slotted one. That'll do, do the job. Probably gonna be too long. We'll see. Might poke through. Well, might not. That was lucky. Right, let's turn it over. Shall we? All the way in or not? Ah, so no, I can't poke through. Well, there is, it's actually too long. I need to put some washers on it. Or, chop it down a little bit, cut it down. Won't make more sense. Not ideal. That's what I've got. Yeah, it's hitting the bottom of the hole. So how long was that one? The original. <laughs> yeah, it's considerably longer. So if I chop like that, that much off that, it's been cut before actually. So I'll put it in the vise. Make it a little bit short. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do over here. We're literally just going to cut the bolt there. In that box. It's in there. So um, let's grab a hacksaw. I'm just gonna run it, just run over the grinder, just to make sure it's got the burrs on it. Oh, grinder over there. Back in a second. Run it over the other bench grinder. It's now a little bit shorter. What was happening is because it's too long, even now it's longer than what that is. But you can see how sh short or how short that thread actually going into that car side. And that's what's ripped off. It's only going in about five mil. It's nowhere near enough. Not the cast iron anyway. So this one's a bit longer still, but it's still a bit, um, yeah, it's not sh it's short enough to go in now. It should be. to the bottom of the hole, which it has, good. Yeah, better. After that, grab a steam inverted. Right, so now, when you grease this up, I'm going to slide that back into that carriage over there. Have a swing of the beer, as you do. Is it the right way up? 
<laughs> Very funny. <laughs> uh, just being videos. Uh, the Tory government are not supporting the most vulnerable. You don't say no, they're not. It's a nightmare at the moment. I'll tell you the other thing is, you you know that there's a thing called the DDA uh, Act of 1995. I think it was enforced in 2004. <clears throat> it's a dis uh, Disability Discrimination Act. And um, that is at risk at the moment because of Brexit. But this act means, well, obviously, but it, it means what it says. You know, must, you know, you must just, uh, discriminate. Well, for Matthew, because he has he, he has uh, torsion to sound, it affects his vocal cords as well. He can't speak properly. Well, it's quite he can speak, but it's hard to understand. So for him to pick the phone up and try and talk to someone is absolutely well, he just can't do it. So he he relies on his family around him to. You know, phone the council up or whatever needs to be done. He relies on everybody else. He can't deal with it himself. He wants to, but there's no there's no system in place for him to do so. Obviously, if he could do it himself, it would be more efficient and things get done much faster. But no, there is no way in this modern day where he can contact the wheelchair people or in case he's got a problem with the wheelchair. Or, um, occupational therapist or anything like that there's no way for him to contact them without phoning them up or going in to see them he's disabled them. he's in a wheelchair so everything's like expensive because obviously he has to use taxis or whatever form of transport you get to hit yeah you know, for him um but you know what you know what's, why can't they use email for god's sake why has everything got to be made so much harder for him in a, you know, in this modern era where we've got the fibre internet, you know, he's, a, he's he lives in Norwich, so that's on the outskirts of Norwich, and um, what, what it shouldn't be difficult, should it? There should be some kind of contact system where he can get in contact with somebody because he's not the, you know, okay, he he can't speak because of um, he's you know, well, he does speak, it's very hard to understand. But what about the people who you can't speak? Or people who are deaf and they're um you know they're, they're you know they're not always that legible. You know what are these people? Who's out there you know, fighting their bloody for? Really, this is such a simple thing they could do, but do they? Do they help? So no, this um, it fa they fail on so many counts and, and they fail in areas which they don't need to. There should be systems like for the doctor surgery and stuff like that where they can contact via. Some kind of contact system. I'm not going to say an email, but it could go to an email. But like a contact form, you can do it online or something, or even a text mess or texting system, where you can you know you could send a text message, say he needs an appointment, for whatever reason. But no, they don't. They they don't. <clears throat> they don't want to make it easy for you. It's like suffering in silence, though. So if it wasn't for Caroline or myself or. or you know, the city siblings helping, it'd be um it'd be even harder for him. And he wants to be independent. You know, he lives on his own. Of course he wants to be independent. Why have you been living on his own? I have to admit that when when before he got the, his little flat, they wanted to put him into a like a home. You know, obviously we wouldn't gonna let that happen, obviously. But um that was kind of what they were suggesting. The thing is, Matthew's Matthew's got political degrees for God's sake. You know, he's he's um the kind of place. It's a place called Clare Hospital, a place that sheltered housing. That's not Matthew. Really, it's not Matthew. It's just like you know, you, oh, that will do. That will do. Never mind his mental state. Like it doesn't matter. But yeah, hey, that's that's my whinge. <laughs> He is lucky he's got a large family around him, so um he's got six kids, so he's got six siblings, plus little grandchildren there. So our oh, grandchildren obviously, his, his nephews. So he is fortunate in that way. But how many people out there are, you know? Who don't have the benefit of having a family there to you know, to uh, uh fight his corner. Or fight their corner, sorry. Loads of people like that, aren't they? Gonna, gonna be. I really actually I've greased this up, I should really put grease on here. As well, otherwise, be, there could be um, areas that don't have any cover, that don't have any grease on them. 
and then there's a potential potential rust. I don't want any rust. Not us going towards trouble. Yeah, goo. Look at that goo. Yeah. So um, you know, you've got some really good. Yeah, you know, even in the system that we have at the moment, there's some really good kind people out there. And Caroline phoned up. Get Matthew appointment yesterday actually from France to uh, the UK. At least they do accept calls from abroad. And um, they said you know, he needs to come in, make an appointment and that. And to be fair to them, they did actually get back to uh, uh, Matthew and he got a message saying, oh, I've just got, new, I've just got an appointment. Right? So they'll send a message to say you got an appointment, but they won't actually let you contact him via like a messaging system, which makes no sense. But uh, to be fair to his surgery, they, they know him and they, they were very good. You know, it's just the system that they're, they're working under, and it, it's, it doesn't work. It's stupid. You know, it doesn't make any sense. No logic at all. Oh, it's everything's so heavy. All right, let's got a shrine here. Come out, and I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. It has been a constant fight, though, for Matthew. Um, it really has. In the early days, not so much now. Um, it's just the usual day to day stuff now. But when he was first diagnosed with, you know, at first they thought they're comparing with Parkinson's, what he's got, and they're saying it's psychological because his father was, you know, his sperm donor um, was a nasty piece of work. I mean, a really nasty piece of work. Beat Caroline up and stuff like that in front of the kids, so it wasn't a, it wasn't really great. It wasn't a great experience for uh, all the kids. Yeah, you know, when well, I was only eighteen when I met Caroline. She had four kids of her, own, you know, at the time. Then we had two together, and um, flipping hell, it's just, obviously I was young, so I was a bit naive. Obviously, these sort of things went on. Kids beat the geezer. Because he had access at the time, and um, there was a bit of a, that was a learning curve. That was a rapid learning curve. But, um, Caroline will tell me things that's going on. Hang on, that can't be right. Um, I knew she wasn't a liar. So I was just a bit shocked for me. So I came from a relatively normal, believe it or not, a relatively normal family, and those sort of things you never really. Yeah, knew about or heard about. It was quite. It was, it was a. It was a learning curve. But when I met the guy, he said, "Oh my god, oh, it all makes sense." After that, yeah, it was a nasty piece of work. Beat Caroline up, drag her about by, by stocks or tights and stuff like that. So I'm sliding this on. And I catch on to the pin gear, and look at that! Whoa, it slides! Oh, there she blows! There she blows! So yeah, that was a learning curve. But um, yeah, just having kids is a learning curve, isn't it? You know, twenty eighteen, remember? You know, as a, as a wee nipper myself, I'm much taller than I saw myself. So uh, yeah, you have to grow up really fast. So that is on there, sort of, nearly there. Anyway, I haven't got the stop on that side. I mean, I need to adjust. Those I can't get you any lower, unfortunately. Underneath here, there's those adjustment screws I showed you on the other one. They're going to need to be um, adjusted. Ooh, it's all sticky. <laughs> what a grease! So that grease is going to—it's going to be excess grease, so it's going to fall off and cause a mess. So I just what I do is once I'm in sort of into situ with it, when I'm comfortable with it, as it is, I'll actually wipe the grease off. Not all of it, obviously, because obviously it needs to be there. But yeah, if I do it too, actually, um. That's got a slide in there. Got to get all my Allen keys. All got to go in there. Oh, this one's a bit more fiddly. Yeah. So um, when Matthew was first diagnosed with this condition, it was um, yeah, it was a, it was like I say, it was a learning curve. That's a bit odd. So that one will lock off. Okay. These ones need to go in. So I need. To go in. I'm, I'm talking to myself now, aren't I? Oh dear, what am I? Yeah, it's the adjustment. Anyway, when, when Matthew was first diagnosed, they thought it was all 
loads of other different sort of conditions. They didn't know much about torsion at the time. And it was um, Jenny Lynn Hospital and, uh, oh, well, who was it again now? Well, and uh, Great Ormond Street. And they did all these tests on him and they, they realised his symptoms were torsion dystonia. And it's, well, it wasn't a new thing. It's been, you know, there's been some people knew about it. Like, Wright's Cram is a form of torsion dystonia. Remember, people like looking over their like, left shoulder constantly. Nothing got there, but he's got generalised torsion dystonia, which affects all his, um, his, you know, his, his torso. So his whole body there, and he's getting spasms. But in the early days of the diagnosis, um, well, they were effectively as a guinea pig. They, they did not have a clue what they were doing. They, did, they didn't know much about it, you see, so they're trying all sorts of things. Um, he was getting spasms in his legs. Basically, his muscles were working against each other, and they were doing things like wanting to bandage his legs up and stuff to restrict the movement. And quite barbaric. Anyway, they had a bad idea where they'd um, put plaster on his leg, literally a fiberglass plaster to restrict his legs' movement, his leg movements. As a, a bit of an experiment. So, uh, it didn't work, obviously. And because Matthew's problems in the basal ganglion and brain and fake sense the message sent to the muscles, he'd, um, the muscle messages are mixed up. They're fighting against each other to create spasms. And um, because of that, being restricted was, didn't obviously work because all it did was put them in pain. So I was, got a Dremel mold, you know. <laughs> I cut the flipping plaster off with a Dremel. You know, like a mini drill thing with a like, cutting blade in it. I chopped it off. Not the leg, but the plaster. Yeah, you want to keep that, you see. I asked him, but yeah, he said, no, I'll keep that there. I thought sort of made sense at the time. So anyway, it's, um... <laughs> so, yeah, it was a bit of a guinea pig. Because they didn't know. They were trying all sorts of things. So, yeah. It's definitely torture to dystonia. You definitely know that, though. But yeah, he has very little medication. A few painkillers he takes, but he takes a lot of alternate days, so, um... He doesn't like take the effect of his tummy, the effect of his stomach, you see. So in the UK, they'll give you this, um, could be paracetamol or other kinds of, or, or much stronger painkillers with, um, oh, opium, opium painkillers and stuff. So they give you this stuff, and it's it's great, you know, it, it helps, it gets rid of the pain, and but it causes a lot of other problems, like stomach problems, stuff like that. So it's um, not very helpful in that way. So he alternates his, his medications. Anyway, he's here at the moment and he'll be travelling back to the UK on uh, Monday with Caroline. And Caroline will be there for about 10 days. So, uh, yeah. Because Matthew wasn't, well, he was born with a condition, but it wasn't obvious. It wasn't obvious because there's was no signs of it, there's no symptoms at the time. And um, it came away. But seven years old, his feet start turning. So he's like, what's going on there? He couldn't ride a bike. He just couldn't ride a bike physically. Not fit, yeah. Basically, his legs didn't go with it. He couldn't pedal. He just want to pedal backwards all the time. He couldn't pedal forwards. So uh, that, that was things start become a bit obvious. So he went to see the doctor, and the doctor said, "Oh, psychological." I say, "No, it was because of how uh, sex was a, was a lunatic." Um, I thought it's something to do with that. So um, if it wasn't, that's just this is you know an excuse, just feeble kind of uh, diagnosis. Um, Anyway, we went to see Dr. Beach. I said Dr. Beach. And we saw Dr. Beach. And um, after a bit of examination and a bit, you know, he to and throwing, he didn't know himself at the time, they came up with this torsion dystonia. And it's quite common. You know, it's more common than we didn't know about at that time, but it's actually quite common. All right, there's play in it. Oh, where's that play? Oh, the play's in there because that isn't locked off. No, that's not locked off. But the play there. You have to get rid of all this play. You can't have any play whatsoever. Because that will affect the, the, um, your ability to pull the, or draw the uh, chisel out. There's play there because it's not tight at that point. So I'll tie it off for now. I'll have to loose it again later because I'm going to need to... Uh, well, what's going on there? Let's, uh, let's get that into the slot. Nope, not that one. Not that one. Oh, that one. Let's get that in. So I'll tighten it off now. It's at least set at 90 degrees, perfect 90 degrees there. 
because I will. Oh, most of the time, I won't be using the um, the angles at all. Just be ninety degrees. So uh, I can always change it if I don't want to. Yeah, if I, if I want to do an angle. That's uh, still a little bit of play there. Don't want any play there? Where's that play? What's it there? Uh, okay. That's All right, there's some shimming me doing. Pass it in there. Oh, and that's four zero okay. It's not a lot of play, but there's definitely play there. So that that will need to just some adjustment there. It might just be that's not tight enough. This one here, which I tightened a minute ago, it might not be tight enough. Oh, it's frustrating when things don't work out 100 percent straight away. That's tight there. It's like the other side. Anyway, we'll leave it. A little bit play, it's not too much. Right, there we go. So that should be a little bit less. Mm, that'll free up though, that will. That will need some adjustment. Not too bad though. Might be on the tight side at the moment. That will bed in a bit, so that'll get freer. Goes along. That might be a little bit on tight side, so I need to. Just that. We'll do it yet though. We'll do it once it's settled down. Settled in. Now, there's a stop to go in on the end there. Otherwise, you could potentially could run it straight across. Now, all it was is like a little screw of a washer. That side looked like. Oh, so a little iron screw. There you go. That one. With a washer on it. So that's got to go onto there. That's basically the stop. Not that technical. <laughs> but being able to drill a square hole is a good idea. I quite look forward to being able to drill a square hole. That'd be fun. Right. If I make, if I do this, as in make some new handles for this, which I think I might end up doing, I'm going to make this one bigger. So you have a bit more leverage on there. So you, when you bring back, because what you'll do is when you bring your arm up and the, you pull the chisel out, it goes up to shh down. I'd like a bit more precision. So if that was a little bit bigger, you'll get more precision. Just a fraction, maybe about an inch in diameter, 25 mil. I think that might be a plan. Cheers on this Saturday. Right. So, there's top to go on there, which is a bit of wood over there. Probably going to use it again. But then I've got to put the fence. There's a fence to go on the back here. Just going to grab that. Here is the fence. That literally just gets to be bolted to the back there. But as you can see, look at the state of it. Same problem with that. It's all a bit nasty. Let's push this back out of the way for a bit. What's getting over here? So the back needs to be cleaned up with a off of those. Uh. There's another machine I want to sort out. It's not nothing like this, it's more of a jig. It's a dovetail jig, the dovetail jig. It's a really good bit of kit. It's one of the best jigs you can buy. And uh, I've had it a good long while. And uh, like I mentioned, yes, I used to have um, dovetail guides and all sorts of stuff with it, which you could do. Um, Sorry, bunny, bunny ears and all sorts of stuff. So you can do quite interesting um, 
yeah, very interesting actually, very interesting kind of joints. Strong joints as well. Great for doing boxes. That's kind of well, yeah, I was toying with the idea of getting rid of it and I thought, well, what you get for it, is it really worth it? You know? I thought to myself, you know, just, just have a play on the channel. Do some stuff on the channel with it, I thought it'd be quite good. Great for box making. So that too, I think we're gonna take that with a angle grinder and the wire brush. I'm going to use a bit of um, white spirit and the diamond because there's lumps on here which I need to get rid of. I'll flatten them off. You could put a sacrificial um, fence on the back, like a piece of wood or something. Um, I'd be, in some ways, I'd be more interested in putting something like uh, something that can grip, a piece of rubber. High density rubber or something on the back there. So it grips your um your piece because as you draw the chisel out you can grip the crank crank and grip so if you hold it in place firmly I think it'll be better. Make sure that's clean. No lumps, no lumps, no lumps, please. Susan DeWitt, um, your your daughter. What what is she streaming? What's she gonna be streaming? Is it gaming or? Oh, she's talking politics. Don't do it. <laughs> You need to be careful about profanity and stuff like that on this channel, even on Twitch, because they get the start to get tough on it. A lot of the channels, yeah, a lot of the um, platforms I know. But I'm gonna have to be careful what I say. You see, so, it's got a bit of pitting on there. It looks a bit on the surface. I'll get rid of that. Look at glazed. I don't think this um Stanley blade is any good anymore. I'm scraping on a bit of old iron. Any old iron, any old iron, any any old iron. Oh my god, who's that? Um Bernard Gibbons. What is that? Oh right, said Fred. <laughs> Was it a piano out or something? No, it's just right, see, free. Get the handles and things that held the candles. I ain't got us nowhere on some. Which I ever bought and thought we should. Some of that. I don't know. <laughs> or go home. And there's another one about hole, isn't there? One about hole. Bernard Gibbons. Oh my god, that's funny. I need to listen to it now. Bernard Gibbons. What a character. Right. Well, that's clean there, so that can now be bolted back onto the car. And I've got to put a bit of oil on there first. I think, look at that. Just put it on there like so to make sure it's... No, so basically just put a bit of oil and white spirit on the white spirit of that way away. And leave a little bit of a thin oil residue. The thing is, you see, I, mean, I work in a relatively damp environment, 
during the winter. So I just want to make sure that if there's anything trapping, you know, if there's any um, areas that potentially could trap moisture, I don't want them rusting behind them. So, you know, it's kind of what's part, caused part of the problem as it is. Help Mrs. Late, and we're going to do a bit more on the old um, t shirts and stuff. You know, designs and stuff, and she's going to put some more things on onto Red Bubble. Steve was like, hey, how do you do Red Bubble then, Marcus? Oh, we can show you. We can show you. It's not difficult. Right, just put it all there, like so. Bring it back over here. Oh, God. Navy, Navy, Navy. Oh, God. <laughs> Big old chunky nuts to go in the back. Now, get your nuts out. Where's my nuts? Look on my nuts. Look at my nuts. Oh, here are my nuts. I think they're the ones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, I reckon they are. These are the chunky nuts. And that's what go on there. There you go. I think that's right, nuts. When we see a machine like, you know, like this, and it's, um, I understand why they're quite expensive. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of machine surfaces. Good, this is look forward to being able to use this again. We make all sorts of stuff, can't we? What we need to do, we need to do some joint cutting as well. We need to show you how to make do certain joints and dovetails, haunch dovetails, line dovetails, screw dovetails, home mortises and tusk tenons, and yeah, and all those sort of things. I do like to see a, like a tusk tenon, like a wedged tenon, it look cool. Kind of what we did my floor in the um when we cut the floor out. People might have to remove that switch or have a bypass. Not how not hard bypass, I won't need that as well one day, but anyway, I'm not yeah, I'm talking about the, the lights, bypass the lights switch, as in the automatic lights. This one doing this. Got a saying though. That meant joints, that's it. Doing joints. All sorts of different joints we could make. I'll show you how to do it. A lot of joint work. Oh, let's tighten them up. I need a spinner. I need a spinner. Tighten them up. It's a spinner. I was one there a minute ago. Oh, yeah. Is that the right size? Yes. I love the da da da. You don't tighten them right down until so you've got the all near you can, and then you finish off by tightening them all down. So you're not actually putting that pressure on the side of the bolt. Don't put pressure on the side of the bolt, no. No pressure on the side of the bolt. So just tighten those bolts on the back there. Yeah, these ones here. So just doing them. La da 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 Oh, they're trying to arrange for Carol when she goes back to have a meal. But they can't seem to agree on anything, the siblings. No. They keep disagreeing with each other. And it's usually the girls are the worst for that. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. <laughs> I think we've got a large family. There's always somebody there who uh, has a different idea. Don't want to do that, no. I don't like vegetarian. No. I don't like this, I don't like that. Oh, I can't afford that, which I understand, obviously, in the current situation that we're in. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, all looking good. Right, there's a mechanism on the back of here, which is like a stop mechanism. Do I need it? Do I not? Well, it doesn't matter, because I'm still going to fit it. Well, you're meant to. You're meant to fit what comes off. You don't have to be lazy about stuff, do you? Is it that one? No, it's not. Is it that one? Yes, it is. So that has to go in there. So, there's a screw that's going to back up, if I remember rightly. Hang on, let's think about something. Was there something else to go in there? I think there was. I think there were these. 
things. <gasps> I think I lost the kitten. But I was. And also, there was another thing caught, which is like a stop. What have I done with that? Well, now I don't know. Oh well. There was another stop. <laughs> what have I done with that? <laughs> It'll be here somewhere. It's eluding me at the moment, but never mind, we'll find it. There's a little piece of metal, if you remember right, that goes over here. Right. Oh, what are these things for? What are they for? They obviously go somewhere. Well, that looks like a bush or a threaded handle. So where the hell did that go? Have I done something I shouldn't? Oh, no, that was on the end of here. On the end of that, where that handle's broken off. That was. I remember that. Right, so one, two, three. So the two of these are going to be for the rise and fall. To stop for the rise and fall, that'll be these two big ones, and then there's three little ones here. Yeah, okay. Should probably send to that one, maybe. No, that's just a stop, stop. And I've got that one, and I've got that one. Okay. But there was something else. I can't remember where it went. You got this thing here. Bernard was right. I should have watched the video of actually taking it apart. So that will go on there probably. Double round. On there. There. That doesn't make sense. I've got the right way around, didn't I? Ooh. Ah. Interesting. Oh my god, now I am confused. Oh dear. I think I need to lay down. Right. I know what those two were. And I know what that one is. I know what they are. Oh dear! Is there no bit of metal somewhere? That bit on the floor. Is that bit of metal down there? Is that bit of metal there? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, that. No, no, I didn't take that outside. So it's going to be my bench somewhere. Probably covered up with a shit. Probably covered up with a load of stuff. I've got land about. Once I find it, that might be a plan. Let's do that. Right, put it back in the thing. Put it back in the thing. Pop off. Little bolt. That's the plate for the rising floor. This hair goes on there. But first of all, we need to board up. So clean that board up. Put that on next. Keep my eyes open for the bit, bit that I can't see. It's probably fell on the floor or it's buried under a load of other stuff. It's a bit of metal that goes on here. That's part of the stop, for reasons. So I can't see. But it will be here somewhere. So let's spin this round. Put that board on there. Now, I could I could say I could say okay let's make a new one but what's, what really is the point looks in good enough condition I think it is I think it looks alright
See, the voice was trapped behind it originally. There's all sorts of problems. Let's just um, clean off the old residue behind there. I want to make a new one, new top. I could actually make one quite quickly, but it's a uh, just a bit of board, isn't it? Would I use a piece of melamine chipboard or part or MDF in this case? No, I wouldn't. Would I laminate a piece of wood up to make one? Possibly. Would I use a bit of particle board? Maybe. But I wouldn't have four more at the top. That I definitely would not. You know, melamine in this case. Because that's silly. I don't understand why that would be melamine. Just make it slippery. I want to be slippery in this case. Because you're gripping stuff on it. Why would you want it slippery? Right. I need some, there's some big screws, which are these for the guitar. Which are, are they clean? Mm, not that clean. Go, I don't know like so. And I should have a large PZ free screwdriver, which has also got walkabout. I don't think I'll put it back, so let's do it in what goes. Screw that back down. I might change it to Let's put things to get back together first. So I just actually I'll start using it, that might be the idea, won't it? See how it on there. See if it had any problems. Hmm. Got two positions on there, you can actually bolt this down. Over there or there. Well, I suppose it makes sense to be able to get that switch right out of the way. That way around. Those. There. Is that going to keep. I mean, it's just like that's pulled right back. Or attached. No, it shouldn't do. Let's have that right back then. Right up. Yeah, right back in there. I'll put it on there. All decisions, decisions. Got two bolts. No bolts now, you see, because we're getting towards the end. Use your plan, and that's quite good when you're getting near the end. So I'm going to just that should bolt into there like so. Da 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 da. That one. And this one here. On the other side. I remember I've got that top part to go on. I know I've still got that other bit to go on. I've got to find it first. So what I'll do, if I can't find it just yet, I'll have to. I haven't come about for it. But we'll do this first. 17 or a little smaller. Alright. <laughs> so. On side, that's good. <laughs> Right. If you saw the machine yesterday, you probably know that it was in a hell of a state. And although it's still not pretty pretty, it's functional. It's going to work. Luckily, we first, you know, brought it in here. We tested to make sure that the the motor still works. So the principle behind it is still absolutely fine. Because that would have been really frustrating if you got to all this work and you start pulling it apart and put it back together again, clean everything up and put it back together and oh my god, the motor's bugging. That wouldn't be very good, would it? Really, really annoying. 
Then she blows. So like, this is adjustable, this arrangement. So the idea is you, you have your piece of timber in here, or whatever it might be, obviously it'd be a bit thicker than that, like so. And then you put the handle down and locks it. So it's grabbed it. Yeah? That's it. Done. Holds it in place. And then just to release it really quick, you just do that very quick. So if you want to push it across, right, it'd be um, quite quick, quick, quite quick to do. The other thing about it is you really shouldn't really need to because you can just do that. Move it across. Break down again. It's kind of how it works. Right. That is on. That is on. So I push this out of the way again. Make sure you don't push that off because it was a half. Let's go get the head. The bit with the motor in. What we need. How long have we streamed for? Oh, we streamed for three hours nearly. Not quite, nearly. Hmm. Actually, been to stream for three hours. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call that it. And well, because I could do with help the missus actually. And I'm going to um, maybe go live again tomorrow and we'll finish it off. And maybe we'll cut some square holes. I think that'll be a plan. So that's what we're going to do, I think. So I'm going to say thank you to everybody who's um, joined me here. Um, be fiddling and farting about in my my toy toy room. My playroom, my playhouse, my workshop. Fiddling about with this machine. Trying to, uh, you know. Sort it out in a way that we get to use her. We've still got to make a handle for this down the bottom here, can you remember? At the moment, there's a clamp. This little clamp arranged right there, but that's no good, is it? So we need to do something with that as well. And then maybe we can uh, have a go with it. Have a play with it, that's what we want to do. Anyway, thank you for watching, and um, I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to say, love you, leave you. Ta-ta. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, I've looked at myself, I've looked at you. Alright, so I'm say, don't do well, buddy. Do, 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 do. Just being video. Stay safe. Good weekend, everybody. I hope you do. Now, I was thinking we're going live tomorrow. You didn't hear. I was thinking we're going live tomorrow at, um, to start my live stream on the other channel. But we're not doing this weekend because I already spent some time with the missus tomorrow because she's you know, leaving for the UK to, on Monday. So, um, yeah, just sit, visit the kids and what have you, and take Matthew back. But it's, um, I'm definitely going to be going to start on proper live next, the following Sunday. But I will also be going live on the other channel during the week as well. Some casual lives, Bob. Just, yeah, just winging it. See how we go. So, hello. Uh, my middle daughter is the artist working on the graphic design and media. My youngest is studying web tech and media. And our eldest is disabled, so it's been hard going and finding someone, something for her. This, this day and age, it's, it's, there's plenty to, I don't know what you've had to sit for the years, so, so it's hard to be common really, but um, that's the thing, so it's, you can't standardise disabilities, so everyone's disability is, is different. Even everybody's disability, who might be the same disability, you might have, yeah, different symptoms, you know, or, or their lives are affected differently. Like Matthew's dystonia, it's not the same as somebody else's dystonia. You know, there's all different types, and some people are affected in different ways. That's just how it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what Simon's saying. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's not actually her birthday tomorrow. Her birthday's actually, yeah, she won't be here, basically. So she's, we're having a, a meal and whatever here. And then that Darren and the, and the grandchildren are coming over. So, um, yeah, so anyway, so it's just that. Well done, I was interested in seeing it go back to you. Oh, cheers, Bernard. Thank you. I, I thought I'll try to get the camera a bit closer in this time because it was, um, I agree, it was too far away. Can't really see what's going on, can you? Yeah. Uh, what else, what else, I think the plan so far is to do some modern games with a retro night. Oh, I thought, like, yeah. Oh, retro games? What, like, ping, pong, ping, pong, or tennis? <laughs> so, retro game, that's a brilliant idea. What have I just done? Have I just stood on? I think I just stood on my connection here. 
I think I just stood on my wires. Put it back in. Let's just put that. What's going on there? Da 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 da. I'm going to click on that and then go deactivate and activate. And we're back in. Oh, we're back again. I, I've got wires draped everywhere at the moment. I stood on the connection down there and disconnected the cables. So that's a bit of a silly thing to do. So just sort of just check chat before we go. La 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 la. <laughs> Where are we again? Back in the chat. Back we go. Dee, 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 dee. My middle daughter is in the arts working on graphic design. My um sister, uh, she's the, the middle sister. She's a graphic designer. She's worked for a company called Stenic Design in the UK. These days, it's more about looking after kids, I think. Graphic design and media, that's a very sensible topic. Very good. My youngest is uh, studying web tech. Oh, what? oh, web technology is all the back end stuff. And media. Yeah. When we used to do the radio, the, the complicated bit was actually making the websites work. And... It was uh, in the early days of the internet, what have you. So it's, you know, anyway, it was, we created this um, website, which is, uh, we were uploading and playing as a radio station, and also on Sky Radio as well, and um, which was flipping expensive. But it was all, it wasn't one server, because we had quite a few people logging on. We, we couldn't get away with one server. We had to have multiple servers piggybacking each other to make the whole thing work. So it was quite complicated. It was, um, it was a learning curve, you know. It really was. Especially at the time, it was all new. These days, it's like videos, they do everything, isn't it? <laughs> Lucky boat goes, ta ta! <laughs> uh, yeah, da 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 da. Oh, I hope we've got something nice for a special day. She's already got so She's got me, you see. Oh, we will do. We will do. I'll be when she gets back, actually. Which is good, it gives me a bit of time actually, because having a birthday that close to, um, uh, to, you know, to Christmas is quite, it's, you know, quite difficult. I told her she needed to have it on a different day. <laughs> on a break here, whole stream, but working hard, says Simon Zayce. It's okay, I'll post it in the comments after the live stream. Oh, well, that's fine. I said it was a bit. It's a way to help with social skills because we're pretty isolated. That's a really good point, Suzanne, isn't it? Because we're quite isolated. Well, not, we are, we're kind of on the edge of a hammer, but still, we are that close to much civilization apart from our, you know, people living with us. And I'm actually honest with you, I'm, I'm quite an insta, sort of insta person. I'm fine. I don't. I don't get out much. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't get out much. Politics is mama's thing. Aha! That's why they're so grateful I have you all to talk to. <laughs> I have to admit, I do bore my kids senseless with it sometimes. I just can't believe what's going on half the time. I really can't. Oh, dear. Burn is Cribbon! Oh, Cribbons! Cribbons or Cribbons? It's a Cribbons, it's all Cribbons. Can't remember. Paracetamol, a uh, Vic, uh, Vic again. Paracetamol and codeine. Makes, yeah, just me. I've had it before. It's horrible. Um, doesn't agree with Carol. And I think she's allergic. Well, she's allergic to. Well, she's had like problems with her stomach. Like she had the operation and she had pop hair, and the softness. So plus she had the gallbladder out, and all those things are much much better now. She's got. She gets trapped wind like crazy now. She's like a, she's like a walking fart. That's what she is. Oh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Well, I think I've got from then. I've also got my hair. Oh, birthday day too, holidays. Sex, she says, says gingers. Yeah. So everyone's broke then, aren't they, you see? Everyone's broke. No, we are. 
Okay. Anyway, I'll go, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go love you and leave you because I'll go set. I need to make sure that Mrs. is okay. Oh, I'll be in trouble. I'm under the thumb, you see. That I am. Oh, dear. So, thanks for joining us. And I'm not going to lie again tomorrow and we'll finish this machine. I'll be part three. Time to go. That's all.